Our BCS Spotlight game presented by ADT as ABC Sports brings you to Tallahassee for fifth-ranked Florida State and number two Miami, both undefeated at 5-0. Today, Brock Berlin will try to become the first first-time starting quarterback for the Canes since 87 to win here. On the other side, Miami has won three straight. The Florida State seniors, led by Bull Ware and company, have never beaten their arch nemesis from Miami. 47th reunion next. Years, both teams ranked in the top 20, but only the fourth time both teams ranked in the top five. Here comes Florida State. Both times they won their national championship, they beat these guys to get there. Here's the five-time national champs from South Florida. Oh, you can feel it. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Brad Nessler and Bob Greasy. This is the 47th renewal of these old rivals. And for Miami and Florida State, I don't think, Greasy, we've ever done a game with two top five teams where there's more question marks. Talking with Larry Coker and Bobby Bowden this week, they said, you know, we'll tell you at 3.30 how good our teams is. Bobby Bowden said, it's a measuring stick game, so let's measure them. Miami's 5-0. They could very easily be three and two. They just escaped West Virginia a week ago Thursday. Exactly, and their offense seems to be struggling because of that West Virginia game 10, 10 days ago. Jared Payton gets his first start as a five, fifth year senior at the University of Miami, not because he's not good, because he's had two number one draft picks, uh, Portis and McGahee in front of him. He gets to play today, but I think the key for Miami is Kellen Winslow. They're big tight end. He leads them in receptions. He's got to have a big day as well as uh, Brock Berlin. But they've got to play well to give him, give him a chance. Yep. Well, the reason he's starting is because Frank Gore out with an ACL for the second time in three years. You talk about Florida State's offense. We saw Chris Ricks a couple weeks ago against Colorado look great. They look good against Duke. They're playing well. There's one constant that nobody can argue with. Florida State's defense looks like it's back. Well, I, I like Chris Ricks, and I think he's back, and I think he's going to do well. But when you talk about Florida State, the defense jumps out at you. They lead the nation in fewest points allowed, fifth in defense overall. They've only sacked this. They haven't sacked Miami's quarterbacks in the last three years, so you know they're going to get after it. But I think this game is going to come down to turnovers. With the weather the way it is, turnovers, defensive scores, and uh, special team scores are going to play a big part of well, it. Well, it could very well come down to the smallest guys on the field. With more on that, let's go down to the field. Here's our third man on our team, Lynn Swan. Swan. We focus so much on the big talent, the guys who've been drafted in the first, second, third round of the National Football League from the teams in this game. But it very often comes down to the small guys, the kickers. John Petty for Miami. What a game he had against West Virginia, winning it with five field goals. He's 10 out of his last 10. He's from the Gulf Coast. He considers himself a cool surfer guy which plays well in today's rain. Xavier Bethia has a job for Florida State. He is also on the roll. Four out of his last four. His longest is about 29 yards this season. He is a young man that had a chance to win it for Florida State last year in this same matchup. There is nothing more that he wants than have a last chance to win it again for Florida State this time out, Brad. It's a good thing swans like water. <laughs> it's 75 degrees. It's been raining all morning. Bob, it'll affect the game without a doubt unless it clears up in a hurry. No, no question about it. And, uh, you know, if, if it does, you know, Miami might be favored in that area because one third of the touchdowns their offense has scored has come from their defense or the return teams on the kicking game. Get into the game with Enhanced TV. Play along. Get up to the minute stats. Vote in polls. Enhanced TV is live now at ESPN.com. Florida State won the toss. They deferred. There's Xavier Bethia, who Swanee just spoke of. He'll tee it up. And one of the great return teams in the country, waiting deep. We saw Devin Hester, the opening kickoff against Florida, take it 97 for a touchdown. He's been out with an ankle injury since that game. He's back, and you can tell he's ready to go. And he is a true freshman. So he's he's got to be a little excited. I'd say. 47th meeting between these two rivals, and the kick is short. Takes a splash at the 12, picked up at the 9. Hester trying to tightrope the sideline. And he's out across the 25-yard line. Good return when it looked like he might be dumped inside his own 10. So Brock Berlin, a kid who is undefeated in the last 51 games he's played in dating back to high school. His record at Miami is 5-0. 
He was the savior in the Florida game. We saw and did for you. He has seemed to play his best football when it's when the when he needs to in the fourth quarter at Florida and last week against West Virginia. The Canes start just inside their own 28. Winslow in motion. Quick throw out to Winslow. He's buried immediately. Loss. Nope, they're going to say incomplete. In fact, Stanford Samuels from Miami made the stop. Let's take a look at our outback stakeout starting lineups. Here's how they look. Winston carries a great one at the guard spot. Rodriguez, Myers, and Carlos Joseph. The backs and receivers for the Kane. Jared Payton making his first start. As Bob mentioned, Quadrant Hill is a fullback. Winslow, the tight end, and Beard, and more the wide receivers. Larry Coker, 29 and 1 at Miami as head coach. Second down and 10. Peyton slipped. Ball almost came out, and he's dumped for a loss. Darnell Dockett was the first guy there for Florida State defensively, and here's how their group looks. Up front, it's a good one. Emmanuel, Dockett, Womble, and Moore really strong at the two tackle spots. Bowler. Augustine and Pope are all senior linebackers. They want to win this one badly in the secondary. Much better than a year ago. McFadden, Ward, Carter, and Stanford Samuels, who made the first play of the ball game defensively for the Knowles. A veteran defense. Ten starters returned from last year. Seven seniors and four juniors. From the shotgun now for Berlin. Heavy rain at Doe Campbell on a third down and 13. Berlin fires it complete, but way short of a first down. Kevin Beard made the catch. B.J. Ward dropped him at his tracks, and it's three and out Miami. Well, conditions like this, you want to play defense first because the offense is going to have trouble pitching and catching. Berlin's got a glove on. He came out initially without the glove, didn't throw very well, put a glove on. That seemed to help him get a little bit more traction a little friction on the ball so Brian Monroe the freshman will have to kick Dominic Robinson is waiting on the other end not a good kick and Robinson will have to let it bounce everybody clears out of the way and this is not the kind of weather as guys are sliding all over the place that either of these teams wanted to play in in this matchup well you know you know in this kind of weather if you had practice you might cancel practice or you at least delay it. But a lot of times you have to practice in this because you may have to play in it. Here you go. Chris Ricks, 63% of his passes. We saw him have a huge game against Colorado. This is his 27th career start. He's won 19 of them. Often maligned by even the hometown fans. As we said to him a couple weeks ago, I said, Chris, the good news is you've started three years. The bad news is you've had to take three years of grief. He's getting better, though, every week. Every week, and he's gone through all that. The, the, good, the good side of it is yet to come. Jones trying to bounce it outside as there was nothing inside, and he picked up maybe two yards. Greg Jones, who had the big game against Miami a year ago. Right. Outback, Steakhouse starting lineups for Florida State. The big eaters up front. These guys can go through some blooming onions. Barron, Meinrod, <laughs> Castillo, Meeks, and Willis. The backs and receivers. You already saw Jones. B.J. Deans is lead man. Irons the tight end. P.K. Sam and Crafonzo Thorpe. Two of many receivers you'll see for Florida State today. Second down and eight. From the 32. Just a toss to Jones trying to get to the corner. And that Miami defense as it always is. Quickly out there to meet him. Stopping him short of the 35. John Vilma is the guy that made the stop defensively for the Canes. And here's how they look up front. Carroll Wilfork, the big fella at about 345 inside. Harrison Atkins, who's back after an ankle injury, kept him out a week ago. Rangy linebackers, Williams, Vilma, McClover. And the secondary is a good one led by Sean Taylor, an All-American. Roll Threat making a start today, and Alfonso Marshall. Threat's in there because Mo Sykes is out injured, but still may play. Third down at five. Florida State. Ricks running out of time, and down he goes. Sacked by Thomas Carroll. Way back at the 18-yard line. It's Miami defense. It's been, been very, very dominant. Watch the, from the left side over here. Carroll, the defensive end, just going to go up the field. 
Number 90 makes the sack. First sack of the ball game. Only the 11th sack Florida State's given up, and they lost 13 yards. Now they have to punt. Had some pressure on the kicker, but he got it away. Roscoe Parrish clears out, and much like the first punt of the ball game, they just have to get everybody out of the way, let the ball roll into a puddle at the 41-yard line, and that is where Miami will have it back on offense when we come back. How'd you like to own the poncho concessions today? Ah, that's a good idea. It's a little wet out there. Good starting field position for Miami, though. Exchange of punts, Brad. Miami picked up 13 yards. That may be key all day in this weather. And they'll work this time from the 41. Peyton. Boy, oh, not much. Got about a yard. Florida State, Bob mentioned, they're the number one scoring defense in the country. That's not all they do well, though. <laughs> 22 sacks. Yeah, they're third in the nation in sacks. I mean, come on. You don't need to go against the defense this good and then have a bad field and a wet ball, too. Three touchdowns in five games is all they've allowed. That's pretty good. That's enough to make Mickey Andrews smile, and he doesn't oh, yeah. smile about everything. Oh, yeah. Second down and nine from the 42. Wind picks up now on top of the rain. Play action for Berlin. He wants it all. Going deep on the left sideline. And it's out of bounds, incomplete, intended for Ryan Moore as we check in with John Saunders in New York. John? Brad, the Verizon wireless update, Virginia Tech against Syracuse. Remember triple overtime last year, all kinds of passing. This time, Brian Randall says, I'll do it on the ground. Great move right there on the sideline. Another there, picks up a block and carries it 75 yards for the touchdown. Virginia Tech on top early, 7-0. All right, John, here we had a flag on the last play. An eligible receiver downfield. One of the receivers was covered, went downfield. Five-yard penalty, still second down. So still second down. Jack Kramer, our referee, walks it off against Miami. Two of the most highly penalized teams in all of college football. And oddly enough, 10 of the last 12 times these teams have gotten together, the team that had the most penalties won the ball game. <laughs> Don't 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 send that out over America. That sends the wrong message. Yes, it does. <laughs> Bobby Biden just one game behind Joe Paterno, and Joe will play a little bit later on ABC. Second down, 14. Now Berlin from the gun again. Brock's got trouble from behind. He got rid of it though and completed it to Ryan Moore on the run. Moore down the sideline, all the way down to the 29-yard line. Nice job by Brock Berlin hanging in there as long as he possibly can. A lot of guys on these teams, these two teams can make big plays and most of them are at the wide receiver position. Ryan Moore, a red shirt freshman playing for the first time this year, makes the first big one of the day. Career long catch for Moore and he got it to the 28 yard line. So there's your first big play of the ball game. Moss comes into the lineup at a wide receiver spot to give Moore a breather. Winslow in motion. Second man through is Peyton, and Peyton broke a tackle. Jared Peyton all the way down to the 11-yard line. 17 yards for Peyton. So one of the guys Bob talked about it would have to have a big game in for the injured Frank Gore, the senior Jared Peyton. Watch the blocking up front on the left side of the offensive line. The fullback's going to get a nice block, too. Right here, watch the fullback as he gets on the line, on the uh, safety. That's Carter. Just pick it up a little bit more. He could have got into the end zone. So they get it to the 11-yard line. That's when you start thinking about Winslow. He's their main man in the red zone. He's on a wing to the right, first and 10 from the 11. Berlin. One hopped it out there to Quadrant Hill. Miami has had trouble scoring touchdowns inside the 20-yard line. Last week, they had five field goals off the foot of their freshman kicker, as Swanee told you in the open, and a lot of that was because they couldn't punch it in the end zone. And you see the glove on Brock Berlin's hand, and you also saw number 81 walk up and whisper something in his ear hole. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you, he was telling him how he was going to get open uh -huh. or that he was open on that last play. <laughs> Berlin has a look 
And points at Augustin, the middle linebacker. Well, you got single coverage up here. Winslow is in motion. It's Peyton, and he only got about a yard. Nice job by Augustin, the middle linebacker, number 40. A guy who's a self-made football player. Came here as a walk-on. He's their leading tackler. He studies as much film, Nicky Andrews says, as most of the coaches do, and he says he'll be a great coach someday. Undersized, maybe 220 if he's lucky. But boy, has he become something since walking out here as a freshman. He's from Miami High School. One of two on that defense, so he along knows, with Stanford Samuels. He knows, knows a lot of those hurricanes. You bet. Third down and nine. Beard in motion, and everybody jumping. Eric Moore jumped, so did the right tackle, Carlos Joseph. And let's see what the officials have for us. Looked to be Florida State that jumped early before Joseph, but maybe not. Prior to the snap, false start. Okay. It goes the other way. So they walk it off five against Miami. Second penalty on this drive for them. The defensive man jumps first. Watch right here. He's going to jump first. And then I think it's Winslow. Then he moves. And then the guy on the other side moves. Yeah, they had, all, had everybody moving. I didn't see Winslow come out of his stance. I was looking at the right tackle. So. Eric Moore, the defensive end, was the first guy to come across the line of scrimmage. So that makes it tough. Berlin from the gun. Third and 14. Miami on the march, trying to score first. Wide open on a crossing pattern, Roscoe Parrish. But Florida State's going to track him down before he can get to the first down marker. Got to about the five. Samuels, McFadden, and Augustin all finally converge on him, and that'll send out the field goal unit for the Canes. And again, the Hurricanes don't convert inside the 20-yard line, but that was a difficult situation. Third and 15. Moved it up a little bit closer for John Petty. This is going to be about a 23-yard field goal. Yeah, get on the board first. Petty, as Swanee told you, has made 10 straight since missing his first kick as a collegiate. And he missed this one to the left. That's, that's the same one he made 10 days ago against West Virginia to win the game. Still no score, 8-20 remaining first quarter in Tallahassee. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right. Jeep, the most respected, honored, and heroic 4x4s out there. Only in a Jeep 4x4. And Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Be you, nothing's better, Dr. Pepper. Soggy. Doe Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee has rained most of the morning. Has lightened up just a little bit right now as Florida State's going to take over after that missed field goal from 22 yards by John Petty. First one he's missed in his last 10 kicks. The forecast was for rain early and then, you know, supposed to get better as the day went on. The wind's picking up. Maybe it'll blow it out of here. We hope so. Florida State from its own 20. They fake the toss, and Ricks on a bootleg wants to throw, and he has to, well, I was going to say throw it away, but he almost got it to P.K. Sam, who made a diving attempt. And let's dive out to New York and John Saunders. Well, it's Virginia Tech against Syracuse again. Syracuse got a penalty on the punt, so they had to punt it again. Bad news. D'Angelo Hall takes it and takes off 58 yards. Another great move as Syracuse continues to have problems tackling. Now 14 to nothing. Fourth rank Virginia Tech still under everybody's radar right now. Sneaking up on people. Florida State ranked fifth. Miami number two with 8-12 remaining in the first quarter. No score still. Ricks changing things on a second down. Almost dropped the ball. Gave it off to Leon Washington and he got two. Leon Washington and Lorenzo Booker, a couple of injured backs for Florida State that we haven't seen since early in the season. And we'll see both of them today. Interesting that Florida State is getting two running backs back from injury. Miami has lost a Frank Gore for the rest of the season. So they're getting worse in that situation. Florida State is getting better. On third down this season, there's what Chris Ricks has done. He's got a third and eight here. 
They'll keep it on the ground, though. And they only get to the 25 with Washington. And John Vilma made the stop. So that's going to bring out the punting unit again for Florida State. You mentioned a little bit earlier last year's game, Florida State was able to run. They almost had 300 yards on the ground rushing. Greg Jones had 189 of that, and 134 of it came in the first half. That's Roscoe Parrish. Miami, the number one punt return team in the country. This one whistled dead before it ever got underway. And we're assuming we're going to have to do it all again. I don't know where the referee's going, but. Thought he was going out for a hot dog there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was, we'll do it again without any kind of announcement. Okay, I'll tell you what happened, guys. Good. Somebody blew a whistle in the stands, and the official came over and looked in the stands. Someone in the Miami student section here just blew a whistle prior to the play. And this one's blocked. Miami blocks the kick, scoops it up. Sean Taylor at the 14-yard line. Tell you what, Florida State would like to have that first punt back, wouldn't they? Sure would. Snap is good. Three Hurricanes there. And then Sean Taylor scoops it up. Right up in here. First big break goes to Miami. So now let's see if the Canes can capitalize. At the 14. Brock Berlin on first down. Down the middle. Got it to Winslow. And Kellen Winslow to the nine. Picked up five. Kellen Winslow, two guys on him. He's probably going to see a lot of double coverage here today. Bob and Brad, the rain seems to be letting up a little bit. But early in the ball game, I talked to Larry Coker about whether or not the rain affects the game plan. He goes, well, the rain's not going to affect our game plan in terms of what we want to do, but it will affect it in terms of how we do it. He was indicating that the balls will be a lot shorter in terms of the passing game, runs that are more straight ahead, that you don't have to turn your shoulders to the line of scrimmage. Winslow in motion on second and five. And it's Jared Payton. And he's popped as he got to the line of scrimmage, trying to fight his way off. And can't. The Seminoles have about five guys there to meet him. The other thing that, Swanee, that's tough is the offensive line trying to get movement when the, when the field is soft. Because when you, you drive to push off, your feet just give out. And during the pregame warm-up, none of the players had any problem with traction. They were running their routes. The line was digging in pretty good. And everything is fine. But once you get to the game and the drilling takes you up another notch, it's just that little half inch or two inches of slippage that loses attraction for you. Last time they couldn't get a touchdown in the red zone. A third and five here with three wide outs for Berlin. Beard is in motion toward the ball. Berlin to the end zone, just overshot. Kevin Beard, the guy that was in motion. And that would have been a six right there. It was well designed. He just needed to take a little bit off of it. Not throw it so hard, just throw it right here. He's just going to go straight down the field. Just sailed on him. Had to throw it. He had to throw it over Augustine's head, and he had to throw it early. This time, the ball will be spotted right in the middle of the field, not on the hash mark. Penny, who missed earlier from 22, will try from 27 to break our scoreless tie. And this time, he's got it. John Petty with the right foot from 27 yards out gives us our first score of the ball game. Remember, it came after the block punt. So Miami draws first blood up three. Back at Doug Campbell Stadium, the block punt led to the field goal. In Greece, when you're captain of the special teams, you make plays like this. Cheryl Weaver, number 58. Just finding, they find a soft spot. They study these things like they study offense and defense. And right there, got the punt. And then Sean Taylor recovered it after it squirted around for a while. And that led to the 27-yard field goal. Only a five-yard drive, if you want to call it a drive. See, 
Everybody talks about offense and defense, but in these types of games, big games, special teams, and the, the punt, the one biggest play in the game is the punt. You're trying to punt the ball, will they run it back? Will you get it blocked? You've got to be sound in your punting game. Monroe, high short kick off the side of his foot. This is a free ball. Did Miami catch it? Jenkins says he did. The officials have not signaled yet. They did. The oddest onside looking kick you'll ever see. And Miami's got the ball back. It's a gutsy call by Larry Coker. Ball's coming down to the top middle right here. It's coming. Now he got it. Whether he gets his feet, foot inbound, just have to get one foot inbound, just like catching the ball. Looked like he did. Fans here don't think so as they've seen the replay, but it looked like he scraped his right foot. Look on the over way here. Out. He's yeah, got it. He did. His left foot, his left toe was in bounds. That might be the best catch of Darnell Jenkins' life. And he's a freshman. Gutsy call by Larry Coker. At the 33 yard line, Miami's got it right back. Play action, Berlin's in trouble, throws as he's hit and almost intercepted by Bolware. Augustin was draped all over. Brock Berlin, and he threw a dangerous pass that could have been picked off. You know, after the Colts' incredible comeback last week, you know that anything's possible when the teams play on Monday Night Football. This week, the Falcons head to St. Louis, where the Rams have won eight in a row. Monday Night Football, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on ABC. Boy, what a wacky game last week. <laughs> Al and John and Lisa oh, had. Oh, boy. And then a wacky game on ESPN last night with almost the same numbers, almost Michigan over Minnesota. Same scenario, 38-35, but no overtime. Second and 10 for Berlin. Fires to an open man. Winslow on the run. First down, Miami down to the 14-yard line. Pickup of 19. Penalty marker near the end of the run. Five-yard face mask penalty is what the call will be. So Bobby Bowden's offense hasn't been able to touch it for the last few minutes. Winslow, number 81, just going across the formation. This is always good. Beats either man coverage or zone coverage. You can pick where you want to hit him. And the penalty, Bolware was chasing from behind. But it's right there when B.J. Ward came over. The incidental face mask, a five-yard tack on. It's first and goal at the nine-yard line. So Miami has come out aggressively. Two special team turnovers have put him in great field position. First and goal, Canes at the Knowles nine, leading 3-0. Berlin from the shotgun. Plenty of time, throws behind his intended receiver, Kellen Winslow. Bob and Brad, just to go back to that onside kick for a moment, I found out that that kick was not a called onside kick. It was just one of those lucky occurrences that can happen. But give the credit to the Miami Special Teams Unit for understanding what the rules of the games are and making sure they can take advantage of a bad kickoff. What an, awful, what an awful kickoff. Well, you know, when I called it, I thought he just almost missed it or it was so wet. I just think it went off the side of his foot. But pretty fortuitous for Miami. Garrett Payton, draw play inside. Payton fights his way down to about the six. We'll give him three, and we're down to four and a half minutes first quarter. Michael Bulware in on the stop. Bulware this week, everybody was talking to Kellen Winslow, and Kellen Winslow has said, nobody can cover me one-on-one. -on -one. I don't care who it is. If it's a linebacker, a safety, it doesn't matter. And Bulware... When told about that, said, you know what, we'll just talk on the field. Now, Michael Bulware is an outstanding player, and nobody can cover a really good tight end or wide receiver one-on-one. -on -one. There aren't many people that can do that, so but Bulware is an outstanding player. On third down, Berlin flares it out. Peyton has to dive, though, to splash down to make the catch, and so that'll stop him just outside the five. Garrett starting to lose his balance anyway. The pass was a little bit in front of him. And it was a swan dive to the five, and that's where the kicking unit will come out again. And Bob and Brad, you talked about Bullware covering the tight end. 
I believe on that last play, they actually had Bullware split out covering a wide receiver since they like to throw the Kellen Winslow in this territory yeah. and they had the defensive back on him. That'll be fun to watch. They keep doing that. Well, he missed from 22. He hit from 27. This is his second crack from 22, only this time from the right hash mark. John Petty to try to make it 6-0, and he does for Miami. But Florida State's got to be breathing a sigh of relief and saying, wait, we haven't even seen the ball in the last five minutes, and we're still only down six points. And mark my words, those missed opportunities for the, for the Hurricanes inside the 20, settling for field goals, is going to come back to hurt them. Three trips in the red zone and only six points. Let's check in with John Saunders in New York with an update, John. Well, Brad, I told you D'Angelo Hall returned one 58 yards for a touchdown. This is not an instant replay. It's two yards further out, 60 yards away from a tackle there. Picks up a great block. His second of the game, and Virginia Tech now leading it 21 0. What's he doing? Is Dante Hall impression or what? Sebastian the Ibis waving a wet flag. It's 6 0, though, his team in front. Six play drive netted only another field goal. So Monroe, let's see if he gets a hold of this one. Now Monroe is the punter. Right. Who also handles the kickoff duties. Now, we're gonna go back and take a look at after the after this kickoff. His first misfire? Yeah, mean? we're gonna we're gonna see that little <laughs> pop up. <laughs> uh, I want to know if, if he did it on purpose or if it, did he slip or what? Yeah, he approaches this one and kicks it high and short. Profonzo Thorpe will take it at the 10. Thorpe got outside and run out right in front of the Miami bench at about the 30-yard line. And a penalty marker as well. There's one at the beginning of the play, which is probably offside on the kicking team. And there's one on the other end of the field. So everybody's pointing different ways here. Offside on the kicking team. That's the first one. Dead ball foul, personal foul against Florida State. And Bobby's on the headset already. He's talking about what what plays we're going to run this uh, series for the uh, for the Knowles. They haven't run any for quite a while, and. In their first two drives, only six plays and minus three yards, and they haven't picked up a first down yet. So that's not a good quarter. All right, Jack, straighten it out. Giving Chris Ricks the options. The offside would be if accepted a re-kick, but again, the personal fouls at the end of the run back. There's only one group of guys that knows what's going on right now, and they're struggling with it. <laughs> Every week it gets more difficult. Some hardy fans out here. They've been out here since sunup, and the sun still isn't up. There are two penalties on the play. The first is offside on a kicking team. That will be a five-yard penalty. After that, we have a dead ball, personal foul against the receiving team. We'll march off 15 yards. Net result, it'll kick off from the 45 yard line. It's a whole bunch of math going on there. But they don't offset when you have a major right. and a minor. Exactly. The major takes precedence, so, so the Hurricanes kick from 15 yards up further. They're not going to kick from the 50, uh, 45 yard line. And now if Monroe kicks away, it should get to the end zone. If he doesn't, this would be a golden opportunity to try another onside if you really want to get gutsy about it. You talk about if if that wasn't planned, and it didn't look like it was before when he popped that ball up, that certainly worked out well for it the sure uh, Hurricanes. Ravonzo Thorpe still waiting as we've had about a six-minute delay to walk off 10 yards to re-kick. Another six minutes of our lives will never get back. 
Well, high and short again. And I mean really short. Somebody's going to have to scramble to get there. This one goes out of bounds. There's another flag. Now we'll start at a new yard line. Monroe's having all kinds of trouble kicking that ball off of a tee. It's a wet. His footing is wet. And he's a kick off out of bounds by the kicking team. Ball will be placed on the 35 yard line. First down. Finally. Let's take a look at our Jeep rushing playbook, Robert. Well, we had this play a little earlier. Jared Payton had a nice little run. Run right up in here. Let's go ahead and start it now. We're going to notice how everybody's going to get a hat on somebody. Everybody, every white shirt's going to get a block on somebody else. Now look at this. Here's a block. Here's a block. Here's a block. There's a block. Everybody's got a man. Now that's the way you're going to have to, if you want a successful rushing play, that's what you have in mind. Everybody staying on your feet, blocking somebody downfield. So here's the Florida State offense that has done nothing so far in the first quarter. It's first couple of drives, couple three and outs on first down. Ricks down the middle, hits his man. First down to P.K. Sam at the 37-yard line. That conversation that Bobby had in that headphone up to his son Jeff said, son, let's just start throwing the ball. Put him in a shotgun, let's let it rip. And here they come without a huddle. Yeah, let's, let's mix it up. This is what Chris Ricks, much like Brock Berlin, likes to play out of. So they'll line him up with four wideouts. Booker flanks him in the shotgun. Longest play of the day right there for Florida State, a pickup of 12. And here's the inside handoff to Booker. And he lost the ball. Chris Ricks got on top of it. Nope, Miami's got it. Ricks is the one with it in his hands. The officials saying that Miami had it and fumbled it, but they were down when they fumbled it when Ricks got on it. Vince Wilfork put a fork in it, I think, and then lost it. You're absolutely correct, Brad. It was Vince Wilfork that took it from Lorenzo Booker, picked it up off the ground. But when he fell to the ground, I'm standing there looking at him. I didn't see the football. Of course, you can hide the football around yeah. Vince Wilfork pretty easily. That's right. Here's another look as Booker is hit. See, that's the problem. Booker, and there, there's, a, there's a fumble being picked up by Wilfork. And Wilfork, ooh. It did come out before he was down. Booker. Booker just got back from three weeks of being out on injury. He's a redshirt freshman. He hasn't played a lot. Yeah, it's, you got to hold on to that football when you get into that defensive line. But did the ball come out before Wilfork hit the deck? As Ricks is the guy that made the tackle. I think it did. Berlin, deep streak on the sideline, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Pat Watkins. So Florida State's got it right back. Turnover for turnover. One of the young guys in the secondary that they're so high on, Pat Watkins, a sophomore with a big play. Trying to get the ball to Parrish, number one down the sideline. You've got to see the safety coming over. Said there was a lot of turnovers. The defense was good. There was going to probably be a lot of, a lot of defensive plays in this game. Eric Moore got some heat. Couldn't, couldn't wait any longer. And now the bad news is for Florida State, they're inside their own five. Greg Jones back in there with Chris Ricks in the Florida State backfield. Dangerous spot, spot to play from, though. It's Ricks on a quarterback draw, and he's buried at the one. Sean Taylor from the secondary. Hey, Bob and Brad, I'd like to go back to that interception just for one moment. You watch Watkins take that ball away. Now, Bob, you know that when the play takes off here, the receiver's going, Watkins leaves Winslow. It's man coverage. Berlin thought he just had, the receiver had his man beat, but he just takes off from Winslow and makes the play. That's something a quarterback I don't think could ever calculate. Here's a tough spot for Florida State. They're at their own one-yard line. First man through is Coleman, the fullback, and he only got to about the three. E.J. Williams is there to make the stop. You know, in a game like this, Brad, you got to have a, a short memory. Whether you're a defensive back, whether you're a receiver, whether you're a quarterback. Or a putter in one play from now. Just think of all the things that have happened, and we're not even through the first quarter yet. we got three quarters to play. If you're a quarterback, if you're Chris Ricks or, or Berlin, 
Hey, we, we need to go out and make plays. We don't. You're going to make some mistakes. We just need to make plays. Florida State hasn't converted a third down yet. Third and 11 here. Play action. Ricks wants to throw from his own end zone. Going deep for Crafonzo Thorpe, and he caught it. That's how you get out of your own end zone. Flag down at the spot where the ball was caught. It's against the defense. Penalties decline. First down. First down, Seminole. Tharp on the outside running against Jennings, number 22. Jennings never saw the ball. Tharp just saw it all the way and made a tough catch. The ball was slightly underthrown. Big play for the Knowles. At the 49 of Miami now, trailing 6 0, final minute of the first quarter. Chris Ricks marks instructions to his three wide receiver group, and he'll give it off to Greg Jones. And Jones is swarmed under Sean Taylor, always around the ball, yeah. and it's a loss of four. That run game that was there against Miami last year is nothing this year. With that last pass to Crofonzo Thorpe, Chris Ricks has just passed Charlie Ward, the Heisman Trophy winner, on the all-time list as far as yards gained and moves into the number five spot, and Thad Busby still could be in his sights before the day's over. A second down coming up and long. Might be the final play of the quarter on a second and 14. Ricks from the shotgun. Swings it out. James Coleman, the fullback, got back to the original line of scrimmage. Maybe one more yard, and that's about it. And that's it for the first quarter. So as Bob said, we've had a lot of things happen. Turnovers both ways, fumble recoveries, blocked punts, only two field goals to show for it. Miami leading in Tallahassee 6-0. You're watching the BCS Spotlight Game presented by ADT. Our presentation of college football will continue after this message and a word from our ABC station. Great day if you're a duck or a frog. <laughs> That's the hash mark on the left side of the field, and it is getting soggy. Water, water uh, everywhere. Soggy shoes, heavy football. Six nothing as we start the second quarter. Miami in front on the road, but Florida State in Kane territory with a big third down and nine. It's a game for the big uglies, not the pretty boys. You got that right. Ricks from the gun. Deep down the middle. Yeah. Overshot his man. It's intercepted. And it's Sean Taylor making another big play. See, that's 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 where the inconsistency of Chris Ricks comes into play. Should have never thrown that ball. It was a tough, tough trying to get. He's got to try to hit the receiver coming straight down the middle of the field. Chris Davis was the intended receiver. He looks there all the way and just throws it up. Had a guy short, had a guy deep. That's one that Chris should have never thrown. If anything, Bob, he should have done just what he did, then pulled it back and thrown it to the short man coming across who was wide open. Anything, just throw it away. You never want to make that throw down the middle of the field when there's a deep safety. So Miami gets it right back. Yet another turnover. They work from the 25. Peyton. Does a nice job of weaving his way for almost seven yards as we check in with John Saunders in New York. Michigan State against Illinois in the Big Ten. John Future drops back the pass, sets up, lofts it. Not far enough. It's picked up by Eric Smith, who returns this down to the three-yard line. It sets up on fourth and goal. Tyrell Dorch gets the touchdown. 14-7. Spartans are up. Right, John here it's Miami six nothing in the second quarter Tyrone Moss of freshman's checked in to the hurricane backfield for the first time they're going to give it to him and he's upended before he really got anything going Alan Augustine was the guy that tripped him up so second rank Miami leading by two field goals by John Petty he missed from 22, but then it hit a couple of field goals, and that's our score right now. These two teams both ranked in the top 20 for the 17th time in the last 20 years. This is 
meeting number 47. The Miami leads the all time matchup 26 games to 20. Well, they have uh, seven national championships in the last 20 years between these two teams. Five for the Canes, two for the Knowles. Third and four. Berlin fires. Boy, that's a dangerous pass. And Roscoe Parrish not only caught it, he got a first down. Rufus Brown, number seven, was out there, saw it all the way. I don't know how they got this ball past him. I'm not quite sure how he caught it either because he had the first down marker staring right in his face well, as well. Neither one of these guys could look over a bar. I mean, they're both <laughs> short. <laughs> look at that catch. Wow. That's, that's nice. That's nice. That's beautiful. Hey, guys, one of the things about playing in the rain, the only way you're going to have any kind of success is to focus. We've seen more, and we've now seen Parrish focus on big catches here from Fonzo Thorpe making big plays. No doubt. Play action for Berlin. Flares it out to Kellen Winslow on the run. Winslow down the sideline. B.J. Ward has to collar him, but not before he got to the 46-yard line of Florida State. 19-yard pickup. Winslow moving around. They've got him in the backfield. Kellen Winslow is going to slide out of the backfield. Little play action fake. Now they get him the ball any way they can. This is when he's most dangerous. He is an outstanding runner. And you know, Parrish got a nice block. The guy who just made the catch moments ago got a decent block that sprung him farther loose for that 17 yard gain to the 47. Winslow never looks very big. He's 6'5 and 250, but he's always lining up next to those offensive tackles who weigh 350. They come with an end around to Parrish. Pretty active on this drive. Roscoe Parrish down to the 30. Boy, a catch, a block, and an end around. This guy's doing a little bit of everything right now. Parrish has played in a lot of big games, and he's played in a lot of slop. He played down in Miami. They got a lot of rain down there, and they play a lot of high school games and this type of stuff. And he's a guy that relies on quickness and cuts and shake and bake, and he's doing very nicely with a wet field. And you know, he got a nice block on his end around from Sonoris Moss. So the wideouts for Miami putting a lick on some of those defensive backs for Florida State. And the other Moss goes to the 27-yard line. Here's a guy that was one of the most highly touted backs coming out of the country last year, too. Broward County's all-time rushing champion, over 7,000 high school yards, and they say he's going to be really good right now. He doesn't know how to pick up the blitz and some of those things. Exactly. When he's in the ball game, he's probably going to touch the football or he's going to be sent out for a pass. He's not going to stay in the block because, first of all, he doesn't always know who to block, and secondly, he doesn't do it very well. <laughs> Great combination. Second down and seven. Give me the ball then. Brock Berlin over the middle. Had Quadrant Hill open, but he had to throw it so quickly, he hit him in the ankles with it. And that will bring up a third down and seven. Hey, hey Bob, yes, when, you're, when you're throwing in this kind of rain, he's got a glove on. The last time Brock threw that pass, he had that man wide open. He almost looked like he pushed it a little bit, trying to guide it too much. Well, you, when the ball is wet, you can never tell for sure how it's going to react. Sometimes it's wetter than others. But wearing a glove is good, I believe, because you can get some kind of consistency just having the glove on, some kind of traction with the football. Florida State might come with a blitz here. They're showing it. On the ground is Peyton. That's the first time Miami's run on a third down situation, and he got the first. Eight-yard pickup for Jarrett Peyton. Nice call, Rob Chudzinski, the offensive coordinator, mixing it up like the call. Jared Payton out of Arlington, Illinois. And most of you know the son of Walter and Connie Payton. His late dad also wore number 34 as for a long time, the all-time leading rusher in NFL history for the Chicago Bears. And he is a good football player. But as Bob said, always sitting behind number one draft picks. Today he's getting his chance. Berlin on first down, trying to go to the end zone. There was some bumping down there between B.J. Ward and Jason Gathers. And it's incomplete. Berlin does the smart thing, and that is throw it, don't take the sack, and if they are covered, just throw it away. Throw it to a safe spot, and that's what he did. He's done great in the red zone this year, throwing the football with a couple touchdowns. He has had one picked off. He's done well throwing, but they have not got the ball in the end zone. 
coming into the ball game, Miami's only had nine touchdowns in 21 trips. They've been in there three times today and haven't scored. Tenth play of this drive. They still only lead 6 nothing, and they've had the ball all day. At the 19, Florida State may have jumped. The ball is loose, scooped up by the Seminoles. I do see a flag, however. Travis Johnson has the football, but let's hold the phone. It's going to be against Florida State. And it is offside. Somebody jumped in that neutral zone. It was the defensive end on the left side, I believe. Mickey Andrews, the defensive coordinator, giving somebody an earful. There you see the movement right into the neutral zone, and the snap came. And then the drop came from Gathers, but that was academic at that point. Is that the first carry for Gathers? Yes. Today? Yep. Gathers, normally a wide receiver. They just tried to throw to him a couple of plays ago, but yep. that's the first time he's carried it. Yep. Jarrett Payton comes back in. He's been the most dependable back. That's without a doubt. You expected that. He's back in there. The ball now at the 14-yard line. Second down and five. Parrish in motion. Brock Berlin. Plenty of time. Oh, oh Parrish is polarized by Stanford Samuels. You felt that one up here. You saw it coming. Oh boy. That could wake up this Florida State team right there. It just woke up their crowd. Woke it up almost put Roscoe Parrish to sleep though. This is this is the fall of the quarterback. You saw it was a zone coverage, and you can't throw it that far out there because you know the corner on that side is just sitting out there waiting for somebody to come into his area. Bob and Brad, I've been there before playing against the Cleveland Browns. Bradshaw threw one of those passes. That was the hardest lick I've ever had in my entire career. The defensive back was standing over me saying, we killed him, we killed him. He's out of the ball game. Somehow got up, went back to the huddle, got in the huddle. Franco looked at me and said, Swan, Swan, are you okay? I said, oh, man, I can't run. Get me off this field. Right now, this man is just hurting very, very badly. Bradshaw did, the, did that to you on purpose, by the way. <laughs> no, he didn't. I'll never believe that. Okay. Roscoe Perry still down. Roscoe did what Swanee talked about. He tried to get back to the huddle. He got as far as the hash mark, and he went down again. Stanford Samuels, who's one of the Miami natives on this Florida State team, just put on one of the hits of the year. There's a take a look at it right here. Here's Perry. She's going to come down, and he's going to come all the way over here. This corner is going to be in zone coverage, and he's going to see it coming the whole way. Corner at the bottom just lets him go. Now, what we mean by zone coverage, here's a linebacker here, linebacker here, and a linebacker there. Wait. He says, wait till you get over here, and I'm going to hit you. And right now, the sophomore being helped off the field. What a lick. His teammates applauding him as he comes off. And now the eruption for the Florida State defense that has retaken the field, and that's the guy that put the hit on. And now that all the water has cleared, and the only thing not clear is Roscoe Parrish cobwebs, it's third down. Well, that defensive play right there may have turned the whole whole game around for the Seminoles. Winslow will go out as a wide receiver to the top of your screen on a third and five at the Knowles 14. Berlin screen. The screen pass to Peyton down the sideline. Jared Peyton touchdown. Great call. 14 yards. Jared Peyton in the end zone. Miami leads 12-0. You put your big target Winslow, who everybody's going to know where he is, out to the right side. They double cover him, and then you screen to that side. Jared Payton, his first start, and a 14-yard touchdown catch. That silenced this crowd real Boy, quick. Boy, did it ever. What a way to come back from a big 
kill shot by the defense so the crowd got into it a huge third down and Jared Payton making that number 34 of his daddy's look pretty good to the end zone for the score. We've got a timeout before the extra point. 12 nothing Canes 11 26 till halftime. The timeout for Miami they send out their quarterback and wide receivers they'll go for two here. So far that's what they've done on two point conversions this year. Berlin in the gun. Flares it out. Could have been caught. Kevin Bird couldn't quite get it. Somebody flashed in front of him. I think it was B.J. Ward. Let's go back to the touchdown, Bob. Well, what we're talking about was Kellen Winslow was up and flanked out, normally a tight end, to the top of the screen. Watch when he comes to the inside, the double coverage, and the two guys that he's going to bring with him. Releases to the inside. Now you see the two guys right here that take him. Now if you... You, you throw the screen, you go ahead and throw the screen, you got, you got one guy left out there. Here's a screen play, sets it up. Winslow comes inside, attracts all the attention. Myers and Rodriguez, the offensive lineman, out in front of Peyton. That's just an excellent call. And we were, the three of us had a function last night, and Swanee, you made a great point as you see Parrish being taken off, guy that took the big hit before the third down. Swanee, sometimes you can be the most dangerous guy in the field and not catch the ball. That's correct. We were talking about Kellen Winslow and, and how well he was playing, but there's no stat for a guy who's double covered, draws it away, and opens up the field for a touchdown for somebody else. By the way, Parrish goes off the field. They said his stomach hurts, his chest hurts. They're going to take him in and evaluate him, and they think he's going to be okay. My chest hurts just watching it. Yeah, me too. My head hurts. So our... Score is 12 nothing now. And our Chevrolet scoring drive, that's the longest movement of the day by either team. 75 yards, 11 plays in about three and a half minutes. A couple big third downs in there. A third and seven, they ran for eight. And a third and five, they got a 14-yard touchdown pass. And now in the kick return out to the 33, almost the 34-yard line is Antonio Cromarty. And with a 12 nothing score here, let's find out what's going on elsewhere. Here's John in New York. Well, you guys have Bobby Bowden losing. How's his son Tommy doing? Clemson against Virginia. Charlie Whitehurst, 19 yards to Derek Hamilton for the touchdown. So it's not all bad for the Bowdens. And Terry, by the way, hasn't lost for years. 10 0. Now, Terry, he's undefeated. That's right. <laughs> Terry and John and Craig will be coming up at halftime with all the scores and highlights from the other games here. We've got 11 20 remaining in the second quarter. And Florida State. One pass play from Chris Ricks to Crafonzo Thorpe is about all they have to show for their resume today on offense. Their offense has not done much. Over the middle, this one complete. Dominic Robinson. Robinson's got good moves, cuts outside, and got the first down. They like getting the ball in this guy's hands. Both offenses have wide receivers that can make big plays. You just get him the football. There's the numbers on Dominique when he came in here. He was a defensive back, moved to wide receiver. And a first down at the 45. This is the fifth possession for Florida State offensively. Still no points. Chris Ricks was intercepted the last time they had the ball. Here he pulls it down and will go down. Sacked. Baraka Atkins has another one. He leads the team now with five on the season. Baraka missed the game last week against West Virginia with an ankle injury. This time he collapsed that pocket and hauls in Chris Ricks. Decision making. That's the thing that quarterbacks have to do more than anything else. Whether or not to throw the ball down the middle of the field. Whether or not to eject the pocket. Whether or not where to go and what to do with the football. So now with the loss it's second out and 16. Rick straight drop off play action going deep for Crifonzo Thorpe and incomplete covered pretty well out there by Kelly Jennings. Thorpe tried to adjust his jump and try to go up for it at the last moment. Incomplete. I like that matchup. That's the same matchup that they had going the other way when Thorpe caught the long pass from Ricks. So a third down and long coming up for Florida State as we're under ten and a half minutes remaining in the second quarter. 
You don't want to be eight yards or more every time you're in third down. And that's what Florida State has seen today. Rick's in trouble again. Trying to scramble out. And the ball is loose. He fumbles it. Miami's got it. Thomas Carroll this time. Much like the problems that Chris Ricks had against Notre Dame and Miami last year, they're resurfacing right now. That's the third turnover for the Seminoles, and they've had a punt block. When you when you take off and running, you got to make a decision to secure the football, protect the ball. It's Antonio Thomas is the guy that forced it out. Miami came into the game with, game with 14 takeaways. They're up to 17. That's setting up your offense in great field position. This is the fourth time Miami has started in Florida State territory. They've run 29 plays already in Knowles territory, including this one at the 44-yard line. Peyton, who had the touchdown the last time he touched it, gets about a yard here for Florida State. Three straight turnovers on three straight possessions. That's not how you beat the number two team in the country. You know, a little bit of it, it belongs to the Seminole offense. Ricks has got to protect the football. But a lot of it is also that Miami defense that's forcing him not to go where he wants to go initially and then change his plans. But you just have to hold on to the ball running it and be careful when you throw it. Second down and nine. Moss back in at the tailback spot for the Canes. They fake it to him, and Berlin comes up throwing complete to Hill, the fullback. And Hill got about three to the 45. Not only does it take Florida State's offense off the field and any chance to score, you kind of wonder what it does to the mind of the Seminoles' defense. They're saying, fellas, fellas, we're out there the whole game, yeah. and don't give it back to these guys. Well, the one thing that Mickey Andrews does do is substitute a lot defensively. He had his second line, a lot of his second line players in in the second possession. Mm -hmm. So he plays a lot of guys. So with they're on their own, they're out there on the field a lot. But they're but they're they're spreading it, spreading it around. Expect to spread it around here. Winslow's a slot man for receiver grouping for Berlin from the shotgun. Berlin stands in, delivers complete. It is Winslow. They put a hit on him short of the first down, though, and his hat flew off. There's some collisions going on out there, and it's going to bring up fourth down and about two. Winslow just going to run a little slant across the field. Now they say he couldn't get it. He didn't get the football and get him. Pope number nine was right there to make the hit as soon as he caught it. He couldn't get his feet down to run. So Miami will go on fourth down, fourth and two. Coming in, they were three for three on the year in fourth down conversions. They pick up the football to dry it off, and the offense will stay out there leading by 12 with 8.15 remaining. There you see Miami's fourth down conversions. Well, this is a spot where you don't expect a freshman kicker to hit a 51-yard field goal in the slop, and if you punt it, who knows? It might go no, the end zone. This is a good call. This is a good call. The defense is playing well. This was a gift. Go for it on fourth down. You got single coverage on Winslow up there, Bob. Looks like Watkins is looking for help. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking in. He says, don't line up this far. Don't don't let me out here so far before snap. Well, the officials now have stopped play again. Have a problem with the clock? I think that's what we're going to get, but we'll wait and see. Yes, guys, the uh, referee just indicated to me that the problem is with the clock up top on the on the scoreboard, so they're going to make their adjustments and go from there. We've got 8.23 the way we see it, unless it was the 25-second clock that was the problem, and uh, we're not going to get an announcement, so we'll play it the way it is. They'll wind it now. Yeah, the game clock doesn't affect the players on the field as much as the... 25 second clock. Okay, they wound it for play, and finally the clock does begin. Fourth down. There's Winslow. On fourth and two. Berlin looks over and got it to him easily, and he's knocked out, but not before he got a first down. 
Boy, we sat there for two minutes yeah. talking about where he was, and Florida State didn't do anything about if it. If I was a quarterback, I'd say, hey, I want to get it to my main guy. He's out there one-on-one. -on -one. He just runs a little slanting out. Watch him. He's just going to come to the inside, push off of him, and then go back to the outside. Into the short side of the field for the quarterback, three-step drop. That's like stealing. Yep. So now down to the 22-yard line, a pickup of 14, and Kellen's got 60 on five catches already. They've thrown it his way seven times. He's caught five of them. Jarrett Payton now. Payton, strong run off the right side and inside the 15-yard line. That offensive line for Miami doing a really nice job of opening some holes. That time Vernon Carey coming around to lead the way. Here's Carey right here. He's going to come around to the right side. That offensive line to the right side over there. There's Carey, 60. Hill getting a nice block. Carey about 363 pounds. And a lot of people think that he will be in the top five or ten in the NFL draft next year. Second down and three. Peyton again. Lost the ball. Florida State's got it. B.J. Ward scoops it up. So there goes a Miami scoring threat when it looked like they had everything working their way. That was Darnell Dockett, number 45, beats his man at the line of scrimmage and knocks the ball loose. Dockett, right in the middle of the offensive line, just beats his man, knocks the ball loose. That's a big play for a defensive lineman. And you see Jared Payton at the end of the play just bury his helmet in the side here. As he lost the handle, down he goes. Yeah, that wasn't his fault as much as it was the offensive line. He hardly got the ball before he was hit. See if Florida State can do anything with it before halftime. Seven minutes just under remaining in the half. Chris Ricks got a man. P.K. Sam tips. And... Almost caught it himself, and it could have been intercepted as well. And now the Boo Birds are out. Time now for our Aflac trivia question. Who's thrown for the most career yards in Miami in this series? Most career yards in Miami versus FSU games. Okay. And if I could decipher... Uh -huh. The sentence itself, I'd take a guess. <laughs> Maybe somebody can help me. Jones, no gain. May have lost. Greg Threat made the stop. Threat starting today for Maurice Sykes, who was injured in the West Virginia game. Brings up third down and long. Well, we've had five turnovers, a blocked punt, and a funny kickoff, I'll put it. That was a turnover that I, I my, my, my way of thinking. Yep. So we've had like seven things go on that turned the ball over to the other team. And Washington in there to flank Ricks in the shotgun. Ricks wants to throw a screen pass, and Miami blows that up. And now Chris looking to do something with it. Throws in and out of the hands of an intended receiver, Dominic Robinson. Penalty marker down. Yeah, well, you're going to have an offensive lineman downfield if it was a screen. That's the call. Miami will decline that decline force it and move on. Yeah. Yep. They'll get the ball back with quite a bit of time left. An eligible receiver downfield gets the offense. Penalties declined. Fourth down. So that brings out the punting unit. And remember, Jesse Stein has already had one stuffed today. The most hated sound in college football, the double thud. Yeah, exactly. And, and like I said, the punt. The punt is the single biggest play in college football. This time he gets it off. Great kick. Antrell Roll will field it and broke one tackle. He won't get away from the rest of the group, though. Only about a yard of a return of a 37-yard punt. 5.55 remaining till halftime. Miami leads Florida State 12-0. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Miller High Life. To live simply, proudly, boldly, manly. This is the High Life. 
Verizon Wireless, we never stop working for you. And Chevy Silverado, it is the right truck. The Hardy Souls at Doak Campbell Stadium on a rainy day in Tallahassee where their team so far is trailing 12 nothing to second rank Miami. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan and our ABC crew trying to stay dry at Doak Campbell. 47th renewal of this in-state rivalry and Miami's got the best of it so far. Brock Berlin will work from the shotgun from his own 42 yard line and an inside handoff to Jared Payton and Payton got to about the 44 Sam McGrew made the tackle there. You mentioned Miami's had the best of it. They've started their average starting position is almost the 50 yard line. Their own their uh, 49. Well, in fact it's a 49 yard line of Florida State. They're putting it in attack mode here. They're yeah. not sitting on a 12 point lead. Here comes a blitz. Berlin waits man clears and went right through Moss's hands. He, he may have been thinking about uh, Parrish when he caught that ball. Yeah. He was coming across the field similar to what Parrish did and the hit that he took. Sonoris Moss a little brother. Similar builds though of Santana Moss who starred here at Miami. And that one went right through his hands. Guys when you get in situations like this balls a little heavier wet you're not sure about it you got to use your body a little bit more to catch those kinds of passes you can't just rely on your hands to reach out and grab them you got to protect the ball bring it to the body let's see if Miami protects the ball here on third down and eight blitz again coming Berlin down the middle completes this one it's about a half yard short of the first down I think yeah it's going to be short Kellen Winslow again is the guy that caught it Pressure came on the blitz from Kendall Pope. Larry Coker figures he has a decision to make here, but the officials are going to make sure they'll bring out the chains. Yeah, Larry's going to go on and take a look himself. Looks like the length of the football may be too short of the first down from where we look at it. Almost three footballs. Here comes the punting team. Miami has only punted one time today. That was on their first possession. That's Brian Monroe, and he's a freshman. 41 yarder the first time. Let's see if Florida State would try to put some pressure on him. DJ Ward's the kind of guy that blocks kicks. They don't get near him, though. He hangs it up for Robinson. He'll have to take a fair catch call and makes a sliding catch at about the 12 yard line. Florida State 451 till halftime. They'll have the ball back. They trail Miami 12 nothing. You can't let the number two team in the country have a short field every time they touch it. That's what Miami has had. And again, Florida State buried at its own 13 here. A reline as Ricks audibles for Florida State. They'll keep it on the ground with Greg Jones, who's done nothing today and won't do anything on this play. Oren Harris, the inside tackle, made the stop. Speaking of guys that are working hard all day long. John Saunders, Terry Bowden, and Craig James will have all the scores and highlights from around the country on the Valvoline halftime show coming up in about five minutes. Partner, how much? Uh, how many rushing yards do you think uh, Florida State's got? I'd say none. I'd say minus 13. Minus 13. <laughs> no, that's not good. Huh? That's not good. Not after last year when they ran for nearly 300. And 189 of it was Greg Jones alone, and uh, now we got one of the lineman down I think the center is down there's Frady the yep. true freshman taking some snaps on the sideline there's what Bob was talking about minus 13 there you go, John. so John Frady who's a freshman this and is and they're bringing out the cart that's not a good sign Castillo has been battling a bad ankle for a long long time and it might have just given out on him we'll check when we come back John Frady the freshman comes in for David Castillo who was taken off on a cart to the Florida State locker room. 
So now you got a freshman center playing against Vince Wilfork and Oren Harris. That's not a good sign either sometimes. Second down and 11 from the 11. Talking to Bobby Bowden just yesterday, and he said one of his big concerns was Castillo, the center. And it came to pass, and that pass is completed. Castillo's had a bad ankle really all season long, and the doctors at one point wanted to operate on that ankle, and David said, I want to play, and Ed has been heavily taped, and he's been struggling through even practices at times, so that looked like the part of the body that gave out on him, and we'll wish him the best, and uh, hopefully he can come back this year, or I doubt this game, though, that's for sure. Third and five, Florida State under four minutes in the half, and again, Chris Ricks changing up a lot of things, or at least giving that impression. Greg Jones. Try to find running room. Finally, the big fella bulls his way for a first down. Finally, number six got that body lean going, got eight yards, and it's first down Seminoles. And now John Vilma, who made the tackle, and Alfonso Marshall, who was in on the stop. Marshall slow getting up. You know, Brad, this the whole the whole first half has been all Miami. There hasn't been many highlights for Florida State, but they're only down 12 points. There's two plays. I mean, they score one touchdown. They're five points down going into halftime. Greg Jones has seven yards on six carries. He'd been negative yardage until there. Now it's Ricks going up for Thorpe, and it's intercepted near midfield. Sean Taylor's got another one. Who else? Taylor weaving his way back inside the 20. He might score. Taylor, touchdown! 48 yards, Sean Taylor for the score. You just saw the best free safety in America right there pick off a throw that shouldn't have been made. He and Stu Schweigert at Purdue, I think none of us would argue they're the two best around, and this guy, He'll not only hit you, he's got great wheels, and he showed it on that weaving run for the touchdown. The ball is wet. I know it's tough to throw. You're trying to throw a deep ball down the sideline. The wind is blowing. These aren't easy conditions, but you've got to take care of the ball. Petty's extra point is good. Now it's all Miami. Just when Florida State had hoped they could get something out of this offensive drive. Sean Taylor with the interception has made it 19 to nothing. That's his sixth interception of the year. His second return for a touchdown. His second pick of the day. Here it is. Ricks is going to try and throw a deep ball down the sideline. He couldn't step up. And here he is right here. I mean, it was badly underthrown. It's wet. It's slippery. It's windy. And you had people in the in the in the uh, pocket where you couldn't step up. Sean Taylor was a running back in high school. I mean, yeah, in high school. So he knows what to do with it Did once he, he gets it. Well, Bob and Brad, I go back to what Larry Coker told me during pregame warm-up. The rain is not going to dictate to you that you necessarily don't throw the football, but just how you throw it. Those kinds of passes today are just not are just not high percentage passes. Too many things can go wrong, as you said. And Larry Coker on his defense's touchdown. That's the eighth time they've scored a touchdown on something other than offense this year. And remember, they blocked a punt that led to a field goal earlier. So right. tack on some more points. Non-offensive touchdowns. Miami has led that category the last four years. And now the Canes can smell blood in the water as they bury Cromartie on the kick return. And the long day for Florida State's about to get a lot longer unless they get something going in the second half. 19 to nothing Miami last week against West Virginia on Thursday night was the first time they didn't get a non offensive touchdown a defensive score or a kick return or a punt return for a score season high four turnovers already for Florida State the celebrating in the crowd going on from the folks from South Florida the north end of the gangs not having a very good day. Chris Ricks from the shotgun. Already intercepted a couple times today. This one's tipped. Almost picked off again. San Antonio Thomas. You know the guy that would have had the interception? There he is. Thomas tipped it. Taylor almost picked it.
There's a look at the nine offensive touchdowns. And since 99, nobody does it better than these guys. They just, they just, defensively, they attack. They, they, they try to intercept, pick up fumbles, special teams. Inside handoff. One of the better runs of the day. This one's Leon Washington. Out to about the 30. There's yeah, been very little on the ground today I think, for Florida I think, State. I think Bobby Bowden's thinking before this was this is not a type of uh, day, uh, the field being what it is for these little scatbacks, Washington and Booker. It's more for the big guy, Greg Jones. But now I think being down what he is, I think he says, hey, put the little guys in. Maybe we can get a big play. See if they can make something happen. Third down and two. Straight ahead, the fullback. And I think he got the first down. Looks like it. B.J. Dean, the fullback. And that should move the sticks. It will with two minutes, 17 seconds remaining in the half. Coming up tomorrow at 8, 7 Central on a new 10-8 for this rookie and his training officer every day's training day. 10-8 officers on duty, part of Sunday's best. ABC tomorrow at 8, 7 Central. Here's Washington again, trying to get in some open space. D.J. Williams isn't going to let him. He and Vilma drop him at the 35-yard line. And we're under two minutes in the half. It's been a miserable first half for Florida State offensively. 88 yards, total yards on offense, and 48 yards of that came on that one pass play. They line up without a huddle with a minute 40 remaining. There's the total yardage story, all Miami. That doesn't even encompass the return that just gave him another touchdown by Sean Taylor. Ricks over the middle. Tough throw, good catch. Ball was loose, and they're going to say it was caught and down for Dominic Robinson. And trail roll was right there with him. That's going to bring up third down and about two. Oh, they're saying incomplete. I thought he caught it and was down, so it's going to be third and seven. Our Pacific Life game summary with 120 remaining in the half as you might summarize uh, mostly Florida State's miscues and Miami's good fortune. First fumble scooped up by Will Fort. Then Chris Ricks throwing the interception down the middle to Sean Taylor, the first of his two. Sean Jarrett Payton on the screen pass from Brock Berlin went 14 yards for the score. And then Sean Taylor with number two, and this one even prettier because he not only picked it off, he weaved his way about 49 yards through the Florida State offense for Miami's last touchdown. You know, he was a, like we said, he was a running back in high school, and, and he just, he wants the football. And, and he, he wants to do something with oh, it. Oh, and he sees, when you drop back to pass, he's happy because, all right, now I may get an interception here. You may throw the football, and I may get it. The last time that we were in Miami for the Florida game, we spent quite a bit of time with Sean the day before the game, and he walked into our meeting room, and I know the thing that Swanee said when he left. If he had to play against guys this big as safeties, yeah. you wouldn't want to play long. This guy is a chiseled 230. He's 6'3". There isn't an ounce of fat on him, and you just saw what he could do running the ball. He's bigger speaking, than the linebacker right there, D.J. Williams. And speaking of chisel, if Michelangelo was alive today, <laughs> okay, the statue would be called Sean, <laughs> not David. Uh, you have the dreadlocks going, too. That'd be a different look. <laughs> Third like down. like to see that. <laughs> Third and seven. Chris Ricks. A bad first half, but an open man in Robinson. And he got it to him out at the 46, almost the 47-yard line. Florida State down to two timeouts. If Florida State is to come back in this ball game, it's going to be with Chris Ricks and the receivers making some plays. So you're going to have to take some hits in the pocket and downfield by the receivers. And his freshman center will snap this thing out of a puddle. On the right hash mark on a first down from the 46. Ricks flushed in the pocket. Being chased, balls loose again. 
Big pile up right in front of the Florida State bench. Still Seminole ball. Yeah, went out of bounds before anybody recovered it. Vilma and Williams, the guys that were chasing Chris Ricks. All right, nobody's open. Scramble around, buy some time. These guys are quick. DJ Williams, a linebacker. Vilma, the other linebacker. They're faster than Ricks. These guys can run. Right there, the ball is knocked loose and then out of bounds. They're going to call it an incomplete pass. You saw Chris Ricks' arm come forward as the ball came out, so it goes back to the line of scrimmage at the 46, not where the big pileup was at the 40. Now Second you're, and 10. Now you're soaking wet, the quarterback. I mean, you're soaking wet anyway, but you got all that mud and dirt. Let's go in at halftime and clean up. Ricks out in the flat. Leon Washington. And Washington's got it inside the yeah. 40. They need some of that. They need some of that little quickness, some, some of that shake and bake to make some guys miss and, and to make some big plays. To get something out of nothing. Florida State, I guess, is going to call a timeout, even though the clock would stop to move the chains here. On a day like this, I'd always go in at halftime and change my pants, change my jersey, <laughs> change my socks, come out dry the second half. They didn't take a timeout. They want to spike it here, I assume, is what Chris Ricks is going to do. And there's movement on the right side. Ray Willis, the tackle, jumped out of his Get a spot. Snap. False start. Offense. False start on the tackle. Still first down. The end of the last play. Chris Ricks, who has to scrape himself up. The referee right there with him. Oop, there's a little left hook on Vince Wolfork. Now, you know, see, we, we talked about this last night. You can see things, but you can't hear things. There was some conversation going on down oh, yeah. there. You know, and all of it isn't, isn't made for, um, for uh, everybody to hear, I guess. <laughs> it was just a little left jab. Yeah. Vince barely felt it. Only the second play that Florida State is running Miami territory right here at the 44. First and 15, 38 seconds, and the clock now winds till halftime. Ricks the throw again. Diving attempt by P.K. Sam and he caught it. That got back what they lost on the penalty but the clock's moving. And finally they stop it now with a timeout. Florida State, Florida State still has one timeout left. 23 seconds remaining. Coming up tomorrow, right after the Women's World Cup Championship, join Mike Tirico for final round action at the Las Vegas Invitational. That's tomorrow at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific, right here on ABC. And you can tell by that camera look how wet it is in Tallahassee today. And what a soggy day it's been for the Florida State Seminoles, ranked fifth in the country, unbeaten on their home field. But it's been Miami that's taking care of business. Number two Hurricanes, 19 to nothing leaders. They're, they're, they're separating. Separation, Separation Saturday. Saturday. They got right? some good games coming up. Oklahoma and Texas. That'll be a good one. Wisconsin, Ohio State in Madtown tonight. And you give those Wisconsin fans all day to tailgate. Yeah. That'll be an interesting one. That'll be an interesting <laughs> one. <laughs> Florida, I mean, Ohio State has played every game at home. It's time to go on the road. First road game. Yep. So second down and 10. Tenth play of the Florida State drive, but it really hasn't netted them that much. They would love to get a touchdown before halftime to make this a ball game. Delayed blitz. Ricks got hit as he threw. Look out. It's intercepted. No, it's dropped. And it would have been number three. For Sean Taylor. Sean Taylor always plays. They play a lot of two deep. He always plays to the wide side of the field. That was very similar to his, the last interception he had. <laughs> Trying to get it to Thorpe again. The ball was underthrown, and there was uh, Taylor. He could have run that one back. And it was Vilma that got the hit on Chris Ricks. So now we're down to 16 seconds. Got Bobby Bowden's win total on the right sweatband. That one's getting soggy, too. And Chris on the run. Now decides to pull it down, and he takes a dive, courtesy of Antrell Roll. Well, 
Well, this defense of Miami is not rated as highly as Florida State, but they have got every bit of speed and ability that uh, Florida State has got. You saw the offside call is going to go against Miami, so it'll give Florida State a little closer crack at maybe a long pass here, but it won't give them any time back. And that's what they need more than anything right now. Fonzo Thorpe looks like he's trying to get a kink out after making the adjustment on that last play to try to get to the football. And the like mouth guard came out and everything. Maybe he got poked in the eye or something. Could be. I couldn't see that. Well, third down coming up. That isn't really that important. There's eight seconds remaining, so as they do put yeah. drops in his eye. Yeah. Third down's not as important as the eight seconds. Couple of cracks here for Florida State. They lost the ball again. And that'll do it for the half. They didn't get a chance for two plays. They didn't even get a chance for one play. Seminole. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Looks like the referee is trying to say one second and trying to bring everybody back. Half yeah. the people are in the locker room yeah, already. He's bringing them back. There is one second, one second on the clock. One second on the So there's time for one play. Got to come back. Florida State. That's Florida State's last time out. And now they'll take a crack at the end zone with one more play. I don't know if they'll ever get any all of Miami's players back from the locker room. They're trying. <laughs> They're trying. Now they want to go in and 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 just dry off, dry off, towel off, change jersey. You know, put on some dry shoes. A lot of the players will bring a couple pairs of shoes. This is the first time for Miami in almost four years that they've worn orange pants as part of their uniform. And they're lucky pants so far today. Yeah, they started out as bright orange. Now they kind of look dirty, dirty <laughs> orange britches. <laughs> Yeah, they're a little different color than they were earlier. This defense is pretty tough to pass against. There's only one quarterback in the last 25 games against Miami that has thrown for 200 yards, and that was the West Virginia quarterback last yep. Thursday night, 10 days ago. Well, here's the last play of the half. One more chance for Florida State to do something, trailing 19 to nothing. Four wide receivers for Chris Ricks, three of them. To the bottom of your screen, and he rolls that way. Here's the final play. It would take a Hail Mary miracle. He hangs it up there. Jump ball in the end zone, incomplete. Miami was waiting for it and swatted it all the way back to the 10-yard line. So, Larry Coker has brought his team to Tallahassee, and his team's got the lead. Here he is with Lynn Swan. Well, Coach, it took us a little while to get to half them. First thing, the onside kick that you covered, was it a call play or just a heads-up unit? It was just a heads-up play. Uh, it wasn't called. It was really just a poor kick. The ball was in bounds, and just made a great play by Darnell Jenkins. We talked before the kickoff of this game about what the rain does. An abbreviated offense and kind of a defensive scheme. How much of your offense are you using right now? Well, we're, we're using quite a bit. Of, we're doing everything we can to try to score. They're a good defensive football team. And yards come hard. We know that. We've had some drop passes, I think, with a wet ball. But it's going to be wet. It's going to be slick on both sides. And we've got to handle it. Coach, thank you very All right, much. Thanks, All right. All right. Half time. Miami in front. Try to continue their regular season unbeaten strength. Trying to get it to 38 games. They lead 19 to nothing as we join John Terry and Craig at Times Square Stadium in New York. Guys. All right, all right. Being presented by ADT. So far, the spotlight's been on Miami, the number two team in the country, trying to stretch their regular season winning streak to 38 games. And they're doing a pretty good job of it at halftime, 19 to nothing here in Tallahassee. Welcome back, everybody. Brad Nessler and Bob Greasy. Partner, the Knolls are in a hole. What are they going to do to get out of it? You know, I've been in some games like this, and you got to be very careful that the momentum doesn't change. Miami says, all right, we come in. We were seven-point underdogs. I'm sure Larry Coker used that in motivating them. They've got to play the second half. Miami just can't play one half, and Florida State can say, hey, as bad as we've played, we're only 19 points down. Let's just score a touchdown. We'll be down 12, 
let's get back into the game. There is another half to play, and they need to make sure that Florida State doesn't win the second half, and they can win it very big. The problem they're going to have is trying to come back in these weather conditions, and they're getting worse, not better. They are, but, th but that works both ways. Miami can drop the ball. Uh, Florida State can intercept some balls like Miami's. Yeah. The whole thing just works the other way. And the, the, the one common thing you got to remember is there's a lot of speed on this field. There's a lot of players that can make big plays both for Florida State and Miami. More than one person in the press box area at halftime had the same comment. And they were Florida State fans. And they said, if our defense doesn't score, we might not have a chance to win. And that could be very true. But the weather continues to be a factor. We had hoped that it was going to clear up. In fact, that halftime was probably the most intense rain that we've had. And when you look at the field now, it's getting pretty shiny. And from, as we view it, the right hash mark to the Florida State sideline is very, very wet. There you can see all the wet spots and the shiny spots on this Doak Campbell Stadium field. Yeah, it, it does not look good. There has been a lot of rain. Here's the kick, and again, high and short. Cromartie will take it at the 14. And he has dropped immediately at the 24, maybe the 25-yard line as we check in with Lynn. Well, I talked to Coach Bowden coming out, and he said he told his team, he reminded them that they came back from 14 down against Georgia. He said, remember the Monday night football game uh, with the Colts in Tampa, how the Colts came back? He goes, and just the other day, he said, Michigan came back over Minnesota. He says, we can do those kinds of things. Also, he reminded them that when he talked about the big ball games, he said, special teams and turnovers. we got to eliminate them. He said he's going to dial back the deep passing in the second half because the ball is just slipping out of his quarterback's hand. So there's two intimidators he was most concerned about. One, number 81, Kellen Winslow, and number 26, Sean Taylor. Boy, they had big halves. Taylor, two interceptions, one run back for a touchdown, and he almost had a third late in the second quarter. So first down, Florida State to open the third quarter. Jones, no gain. Right into a pile of white jerseys as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary in the first half. Statistically, as you look at it, the turnover is a huge factor for them for Florida State. Yeah, and they led to nine points for Miami. And the other thing was the field position. Because of those turnovers, Miami yeah. starting on the FSU side of the field. Nine rushing yards for Florida State. David Castillo is actually back in at center right now. And he looked like his day was done when he was carted off earlier. Will Fork comes across the line and Ricks takes a knee. And there's David with a bad right ankle that's going to need surgery sometimes, just a matter of time, I guess. And uh, boy, they he had it taped heavily before. It looks like a white bowling ball right yeah. now. Yeah. Well, nobody's moving real quickly out there in this slop. So uh, he says, hey, I'll just be as quick as the other guys. Florida State had the ball eight possessions in the first half. They had four turnovers, one of them which led to a touchdown, or was it was a touchdown. Five three and outs. And then, yeah, five three and outs, and then one, one punt blocked. Not good. Second and five. Greg Jones, they can't get anything going on the ground today. He got about a yard. You mentioned uh, we saw Florida State had nine yards rushing at halftime. Remember, Greg Jones last year in the first half against Miami on albeit a better field had 134 at halftime. Yeah, well, they're going to have to get something going because you just can't rely on Chris Ricks, the quarterback, to do it all himself. I mean, under these conditions, it's, you're asking too much. I mean, some quarterbacks have huge hands and can throw the ball. I was talking to him yesterday. I've got small hands, and so does he. Neither one of us like to throw a football in the rain. See if he throws it here. It's going to be an option pitch, and it's fumbled by Washington. And scooped up by Miami. Thomas Carroll's got his second fumble recovery of the day. Oh, boy, when it goes bad, some days just get worse. See, now that's on that's on Chris Ricks. When, when, when the conditions aren't ideal, you have to make an extra effort to make sure that the pitches are there and everything else. He's going to fake, and then he's going to pitch to Washington. Now, Washington is, is one of the guys that hasn't been practicing the last few weeks because of injury. 
But he's a guy that's got some some shake and bake and get some plays done. But the quarterback's got to make the extra effort to make sure that the pass gets there and the, the handoffs and the laterals and the pitches get there. So now Miami with another golden opportunity. Their fifth Florida State turnover at the Knowles 11 yard line. Berlin play action throws it out in the flat. Quadrant Hill is run out after a pickup of about three. This is the fifth time that the Hurricanes have started in in uh, Florida State territory and they had another possession they didn't even need because Taylor ran it in for a touchdown. Just talking about Castillo and now again he's limping. I don't know if he's trying to walk it off or if he's heading out completely. A uh, tough kid but that wheel's just not holding up on that body right now. Yeah he came out he said I want to come out and give it a, give it a goal. Let me try it. Second down and seven. They can get a first down inside the one yard line. On the carry down to the six Jared Payton. And that's where he stops. Payton with 41 yards on the ground right now. And remember the screen pass was the offensive touchdown for the Canes a 14 yarder. Peyton has carried the load for Miami running the ball and catching the ball out of the backfield. Yep. He came in with 13 receptions just out of the backfield as a part time player. So he is a good receiver. The one he caught though in five years his first career touchdown catch. He picked a good day to do it. He looks like he's a little banged up. Darnell Dockett came out of the Florida State lineup injured and it's third down. Gathers will flank Brock Berlin in the gun. Miami at the six yard line of Florida State and flags fly in before the play. Again, Jack Kramer is our referee. Fired to the snap. False start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Well, it gives the Canes a little more room to work with if they're thinking pass here because they'll back it up to the 11 yard line. Well the thing that that they want to make sure is that they at least get three points out of this. Berlin is seven of eight on third downs but he's only got two of them were for first downs. So he's been taking care of the football not throwing it where he shouldn't throw it and make sure that you just come out of this with three points. Alfonso Marshall letting everybody know who he thinks is number one as he comes out of the locker room. Draw play gathers inside and gathers. Close, but I don't think he got the first down, although it is very close. And now they might go for it or probably will anyway. They're at about the yard and a half line. They got it right in front of the goalpost in the center of the field. B.J. Ward, who's had a good game from the secondary, he's shaking up. They're falling like flies right now out there. Well, Brad, the only thing that's soft out here is the football field. Every hit, everything else has been very hard, very tough in this ball game. Yeah. You know, we're talking about this field. It's a sand base field. As you look at the measurement for the first down, and they're short by about a yard. And there, there are some pumps attached to this field to drain it, but they haven't used them. And it's been so long since they used them, they're afraid to turn on those pumps because <laughs> oh if there's a leak someplace, it's going to suck the sand out of the field. You hate it when you got a plumbing problem. Don't you? <laughs> no, all you do. So all the water that's constantly pouring out of the stands is pouring on the sidelines, but that water's not reaching the field. John Petty has hit two and missed one. This is another chip shot right in front, as Bob said, from 19 yards out to try to make it 22 to nothing, and he does. So the fumble recovery as it did in the first half turns into three points and number two Miami stretches its lead over Florida State to 22 to nothing. Bad weather doesn't bother this guy. Sebastian the Abbas, a happy mascot. His team is leading 22 to nothing on the road. I think he just headbutted our camera. <laughs> there goes a few thousand dollars. <laughs> We'll just charge the University of Miami. Uh, <laughs> Mark <laughs> to kick. <laughs> Cromartie will take it on the fly at the 15. And nice return. Out to about the 37 yard line. Well the story of the game has been turnovers for Florida State. Lorenzo Booker coming back after a couple weeks off with an injury fumbled. That led to points. Sean Taylor an interception on a pass intended for Chris Davis. 
Then another fumble. This one Thomas Carroll picked up. Then Sean Taylor came up with this one and returned it 49 yards for a touchdown. And then moments ago, trying the pitch out to Leon Washington, and Thomas Carroll had his second fumble recovery from his defensive end spot. That's been the story. On a wet field in Tallahassee today, and so far the Seminoles shut out. And five turnovers is their season high, and it keeps going up. Fumble again. It almost went up again. Leon Washington saying, my fault, as he's tapping that number three. Ball Leon Washington. <laughs> Every player has to adjust to the conditions. The quarterback, the running backs, the offensive line, how you're blocking, the, the defensive linemen. And de but some guys are doing it and other guys aren't. You have to concentrate more when you're throwing the ball, when you're carrying it. You have to know that it's wet and it's going to be different. You have to go back to your practices in the bad weather to know how to play in this type of weather. What Swanee was saying earlier, you've got to focus on every play because you never know what play is going to be either a touchdown or a disaster. Ricks on the run. This time he'll keep it, heads to the sideline, gets what he can, and gets out of bounds with a first down. Smart play by Sean Taylor not to hit him, and then he goes over <laughs> to say something to him. Like next time I will hit you? Yeah. Yeah. Or why did you run out of bounds? Or he just, <laughs> you got to get out of jail free card on that one, you know. <laughs> yeah. Pass through my neighborhood. Yeah. Or, yeah. or why don't you throw me another one? <laughs> The next time it will not be go no, collect two hundred dollars. The reason I know those things, I've been there. You know, <laughs> I've been there. I've had days like this in the rain. Profonzo Thorpe has only one catch for Florida State today. That was their longest play of the day, and it didn't lead to any points. First and ten, Florida State from the 48. Greg Jones. And Greg trying to drag some guys with him. Tough run. Good effort for five yards. But boy, he had to take some bodies with him. Carried Greg three. Brad, one of the other things that shows up in bad weather games is an individual's technique. As you see a player being loaded onto the truck that's Ward, the technique of the players is important. How you make the cut. If you have bad technique in the sloppy field, you're going to slip, you're going to have all the problems. They have had some of those today. On a second down. Ricks play fake. Plenty of time. Throws to the sideline, and this was nowhere near the intended receiver. That was Chauncey Stovall. And it was a good thing that he threw it out of bounds because only two men were out on routes. The two wide receivers running deep. Neither one of them were open. Changing up personnel, the Seminoles. Bring in Lorenzo Booker, who we just showed you on that fumble in the first half. I believe this is the first snap he's seen since that fumble. And he comes in. And as you see, everybody's a receiver right now with an empty backfield. Spread out. Three on one side, two on the other. Chris Ricks on third and five. Waits and fires and almost intercepted by Sean Taylor. Well, the recovery speed of Sean Taylor not only to get to the receiver but to get around him and try to intercept the ball just amazing look at the numbers on him and we still got a lot of football left and he has dropped two he's dropped two if he would have picked that one off he might have been gone on that one yeah. too Jesse Stein will punt so Florida State gets into Miami territory and that's about it Antrail roll waiting on it for the Canes Stein would prefer not to let him return this at all. But he's going to try from the seven. A couple of moves got him out to about the 13 yard line. So Miami ranked second in the country will take over. They're all twos. Number two up 22 to nothing. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Bowflex, the only home gym with real power rod technology. Capital One, what's in your wallet? And Chevy Silverado, it's the right truck. Not a lot to cheer about for Florida State so far today. They trail 22 to nothing to the number two team in the country, and Miami's got it back. 
at its own 13 yard line. And the thing Florida State needs is the defense to step up, take it away, and score a touchdown. They need a fumble, they need an interception, something to turn this to help their offense. They get everybody up close to the line of scrimmage. Jared Payton runs right through it, though. Payton out to the 20 yard line, a pickup of seven. We'll pick up John in New York. And the day keeps getting worse for the Bowdens on this Taco Bell update. Virginia and Clemson, Matt Schaub, five yards to Patrick Estes. They made it 14 to 10. They scored 17 consecutive points and now lead 17-10. John, I don't know if I'd sit next to Terry up there in the studio. I'd be catching. Second down and three. Straight ahead again. First down run out to the 26. Jared Payton again. Jared Payton just bullying his way along at his first start in for Frank Gore. Yeah, that nice. Injured his knee last week. Excuse me, Brad. Just a nice job the offensive line was doing. I just noticed in, uh, Rodriguez, the center, getting a nice block on that last one on Augustine, Carey, and Winston Myers. Carlos Joseph, the right tackle. Doing a nice job. The offensive uh, line coach, Art Keel, taking a little criticism this week. He fired back. He says, our guys are playing well. Peyton again with both arms around the football. He fumbled it in the first half. He fumbled one last week that looked like it might have cost him the West Virginia game. It didn't. And he's holding on to it here in the second half. Tomorrow, ABC puts on Sunday's best with a new practice. The critics call it good provocative television. This week, the Emmy winning cast is joined by guest star Sharon Stone and Chris O'Donnell. An all new practice tomorrow at 10, 9 central on ABC. Yeah, right. I like that. I know you do. You're a practice guy. I'm one of those critics. I like that show. I mean, you like to practice. I like to play. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you can't practice, you can't play. That's right. That's true. If you don't do one, you shouldn't do the other. <laughs> Mickey Andrews, favorite save. Second and seven, Berlin, and intercepted by oh. Florida State. Pat Watkins, and he's got Smith. Leroy Smith's got one. Trying to hit Sonoris Moss on the top of the screen. He just runs a poor route. Watch Smith now. He sees him cut to the inside, and he just gets there. Nice catch. That's the thing that Florida State needs. They need a little help from their defense to get this thing going. That's yeah, he was thrown to the insides. Sonoris Moss, is, you know, he's probably the fourth or fifth receiver. I don't, I don't know how many throws on that route that Berlin has made over the last uh, few months. I mean, the timing may not have been there, or it may have slipped. At the 38 and a fumble, and Rick's got on top of it. Now they're having trouble with the center exchange because remember, Frady's in there, not Castillo. Well, you, and you can't take anything for granted. When, when the field is like this and the ball is wet, and especially when you have a new center in there. Yeah, it got up. It just it just slipped out. You can't take anything for granted. You got to you got to double check everything. Only a two yard loss. Second and twelve. And now the fans are getting restless just with the audibles or what appear to be audibles called by Florida State. Ricks quick drop lofts one for Thorpe and he went and got it. Nope couldn't hold it. Kelly Jennings. And that's just a fade that you normally use down by the end zone. They try to use on the sideline as Thorpe still hasn't caught a ball since early in the game. Where they're trying to get the ball to is their receivers, the big play guys, as we mentioned. Thorpe with a great elevation. Doesn't Kelly, hold on to it. Kelly but Jennings got a hand in there. Yeah, but that's that's where Miami is strong. They're playing the two deep zone and then you're really double covering the outside guys. It's tough when you don't have a dry football. And it's still third and long as it's been most of the day. Ricks has a man open. Got him. No. Oh, he dropped it. Robinson dropped it. He got hit at about the five and the ball squirted out. Somebody's got to make a play. Ricks puts it on the money and Robinson just drops it. He's got to so come in motion. Now he goes straight down the field. He's wide open. 
Guess who makes the hit to make sure he doesn't catch it. I think I think they all are looking for Sean Taylor. I think there they've seen I've seen I think they've seen what he has done in the past and they they're kind of getting a little uh, light footed. He knew he had a good throw. He knew he had a guy open. No good. And instead they have to give it up and it's going to be down at the one. Nice job on the punt coverage by Pat Watkins. Good kick by Stein and Miami buried deep in their own territory, but they lead 22 to nothing. Let's find out what else is going on. We check in with John in New York. In the Big Ten, Michigan State leading Illinois and Jeff Smoker, a big reason why. Rolls out to his right, firing all the way. 21 yards to Aaron Alexander. Touchdown. And Michigan State now up 35-7 on the Illini. Spartans are showing a little gumption, aren't they? Yes, they are. That Big Ten is going to be an interesting battle. Well, this might be Florida State's best opportunity to score. They got Miami setting up almost in their own end zone. They made the play that Bob said they needed with the interception a few moments ago, but they didn't get any points out of it. Well, they need to do more. Defensively, they need to do, a, do it again. Brock Berlin in his own end zone to take the snap, and he'll try to sneak it out. And he does a pretty good job of sneaking it out of there to the five-yard line. And that's a nice call. Instead of turning and giving it to somebody, have maybe a, a, a missed uh, handoff to one of your backs or one of them slipping, just take it yourself and get some yardage. I'd be surprised if Miami threw the ball downfield in this situation because of the wetness of the ball. Receivers may slip, not good footage. Defensive backs may pick it off and have a short run in. You always figure if they do throw it that it'd be in the direction of number 81 with those vacuum hands of Winslow. On second down. A long stretch play to Peyton. Peyton hurdles one man and he's brought down on a good tackle by Bolware. Bolware's a guy that can make a play for you. He's scored three touchdowns in his career, two on fumble returns and one on an interception. Comes out holding his forehead after making that hit. One of the captains of this team, a senior out of Columbia, South Carolina. And he's one of the seniors that have never beaten Miami. And it doesn't look like it's going to happen today unless things start to turn in the next 20 minutes. Crowd is trying. They're trying. There's Winslow right there. To get their Seminoles into this. On third and four. Berlin goes the other way. It's intercepted. Picked off by Rufus Brown. That surprises me. Flag down. <laughs> Holding against Miami will be declined, and Rufus Brown has the second interception for Florida State in about the last five minutes. When you when you throw this slant, you better be sure that you don't throw it to the defensive back. He's sitting to the inside. You got to throw it behind him, if anything. Make sure that the defensive back doesn't get it. As a receiver, Bob, I hate this when it happens. The receiver's got the rock call. Rufus Brown just reads it the whole way. Yeah. He breaks on it, and he's in better position. There's nothing the wide receiver can do except turn into a defensive back and try and strip him of the ball. Hey, Slanty, how, uh, Swanee, how about a slant and up right there? Well, right there would be ideal. Oh, you know, yes. Just take a chance. Yes. Three wide outs for Ricks. They've got an eye backfield in there. Willie Reed split out as a wide receiver now after having played some tailback this year. Ricks wants to go that way to the end zone. Reed got it. Touchdown. Here we go. Here we go. Willie Reed finally gets the ball in the end zone for Florida State. Well, they put somebody out there that could catch it. They've had guys open. Willie Reed spent most of the year at running back. And now he's back at a receiver, and he says, let me do it. I can, I can catch it. And he did. And Xavier Betia in for the point after. The extra point is good. First time Florida State has scored following four Miami turnovers now. So Rufus Brown's interception becomes a touchdown. 
Just single coverage. And Bob, I know you like this as a quarterback. Finally, a receiver who knows it's going to be tough to make a catch, and he sells out his body to focus in on the ball to make the grab using his hands, his body, everything else. He doesn't care if he's going to get hit. He doesn't care if his body's going to slam to the ground. The most important thing right now, hold on to the ball. And the quarterback put the ball out there in an area that gave him a chance to make a play. The defensive back, 31, sharp. He was just floundering around out there while the other guy made the catch. A one-play drive, 18 yards, following the Rufus Brown interception. So Florida State back in the hunt. And Batia will kick. Games like this, you're going to make some mistakes. Quarterback who has the guy the ball in his hand, he's gonna make he's gonna make some mistakes. The thing he has to do is have a short memory, go out and make some plays to win the ball game. Bathia to kick. Javier got into it pretty good. Taken at the one-yard line by Hester. Hester popped, trying to bounce it outside, and Florida State won't let him. So Miami will work from inside its own 20 after we check in with John in New York. Brad, D'Angelo Hall's having a pretty good day for Virginia Tech. Two punt returns for a touchdown. Then here, he takes the handoff, fights out of a couple of tackles, goes 24 yards, his third touchdown of the day, and 179 all-purpose yards, 51-7. Number four in a romp. Number five has finally scored against number two. And the Seminole Nation is back into it. First down, Miami. Peyton stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Darnell Dockett was the first one there. Just looking at these pictures and all the way the players are jumping around. It's hard to tell who's ahead and who's behind. <laughs> Good point. The emotions in a college game turn so quickly. Miami only seven points off the four turnovers, whereas the Hurricanes utilize Florida State's miscues much better. Right now, the Knowles would like to come up with another one. Peyton straight up the middle. Peyton into the secondary. Best run of the day for Jared Peyton. That is huge. And you heard the noise immediately dissipate. That is a way you quiet the crowd. Watch the offensive line open up this hole right up the middle. Look at this hole it's got in here. You got a hole right there. Great blocking by that Miami offensive line. Augustine, the middle linebacker, nowhere to be seen. Jared Payton's got 71 yards on the ground. He'll get another carry. Whoa, there's a form tackle from Allen Augustine. There for you, you go. He'd been getting blocked on those plays up the middle. He got tired of that. Under three and a half minutes, third quarter, 22 to seven, Miami leads. At the conclusion of our game today, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Second down and a long eight for the Canes. Again, the Knowles showing blitz. They back out of it. It's a draw play to Peyton, and Peyton, here he goes again. Out across the 40 to the 42. Maybe on his way to a 100-yard day is Jared Peyton. Yeah, I just can't say enough. Art Keel, the offensive line coach, has got this offensive line rolling. Nice blocking up front. The linebackers step in. They fake like it's going to be a blitz. They're trying to mess with the offensive line's minds. Says, do you block me or do you not? They jump out. The offensive line adjusts. Hold the blocks and get downfield. Good job. 83 on the ground, 44 this half for Jared. He gets a breather. Berlin, play action, wants it all. Lays it out there and overshot Ryan Moore by about a yard. Stanford Samuels was back there covering. Yeah, they don't need to pick on Samuels. They need to pick on Brown, the guy that intercepted. 
He's jumping all over those routes over there. That'll make it second down and 10. Clock stopped with 228. And all of a sudden, a big gust of wind just came through Doug Campbell Stadium. The rain, Swanee, for the most part, it's not raining as hard, is it? It's not raining hard right now. It's a light rain. It's just the wind has picked up, and it's like pelting the little raindrops on people's faces. Second and 10. Winslow hasn't caught a pass yet this half. Here's a run from Gathers, and Gathers brought down by Jerome Carter. This is going to bring up a big, big third down for both teams right now. It's going to be a long yardage situation. Florida State knows they need it back. Brock Berlin knows he's got to keep the clock moving, the chains moving, and hold on to a 15-point lead. There's his third down passing, and that's the way he's kind of been this year. And pretty effective with his third down throws. Came in at over 70%. Has had a couple of interceptions in third down. Now you got to be careful because you know the defense is going to be aggressive. So if you're going to run a slant, you may run. You got to be careful. Third and eight. Here's his pass. It's short to Winslow on the run. He'll have a first down and more. Still on his feet. Broke a tackle at the 40. Winslow down the sideline. The ball is loose. Florida State trying to get it. Did they get there? They did. Bryant McFadden's got it. An unbelievable catch and run by Winslow, but he put it on the ground. He just tried to do a little bit too much. This is a nice, nice call. Downfield receivers, you hit your, your superstar coming across the field. He breaks two tackles. Now he's going to run over a safety right here. And then Pope, number nine, comes and knocks the ball loose. Kendall Pope forced the fumble. Brian McFadden recovers. Florida State's got it back. They trail 22 to 7, but they'll be on offense when we come back. Kellen Winslow blew right now. McFadden with a fumble recovery after a great catch and run by Winslow. Pope knocked it out. And now Florida State with a fumble recovery takes over at the 17 yard line. Booker back in there at tailback. They fake it to him. They fake the end around. Rick still holding. And then just lost one way out of bounds. Nobody buying. He didn't have anybody open. It was a reverse pass and nobody open. The defense for Florida State doing their job. They've taken it away. The last three possessions for Miami have been turnovers. Florida State has scored on the second one. This is the third one. With 121 remaining in the third quarter, Chris Ricks, who had a tough game last year, 8 out of 19 against the Knowles, is 9 of 25. So very similar statistics to a year ago. He'll work from the shotgun here. On a second and 10. Open man is P.K. Sam. Sam wheels and got out to the 31-yard line. Good pitch and catch there. 14-yard pickup. They'll move the chains and will probably move under a minute before the next snap. Remaining third quarter. Good pass protection, good, good throw. There's the numbers now on Chris. The touchdown pass was to Willie Reed. Both interceptions were to Sean Taylor. Willie Reed is back in there as a receiver. Ricks sets up in a puddle, floats it out to P.K. Sam, close to another first down, out to the 39-yard line. So back-to-back -to -back tosses to P.K. of 14 and 9, and Florida State's got a little bit of something working here. Chris Ricks has been trying to get in a groove all day. I don't know if you'll ever get in a groove in this sloppy mess, but yeah. he's looking a little better. Well, you know, sometimes you have to hit bottom before you can rise to the top. We saw Brock Berlin do that. Exactly. Against Florida. You're seeing, you're seeing a little bit of that starting in Chris Ricks right here. Second down and a yard. Miami thought about a blitz and straight up the gut they go, and it's a first down run for James Coleman. And that's going to bring the first quarter to a close. So Florida State still trailing by 15. 
But they do have some momentum. Is it enough momentum that we can say it's changed into Garnet jerseys? We don't know, but we played three quarters in the 47th battle between the Knowles and the Canes. And the Hurricanes lead at the end of three, 22 to seven. You're watching the BCS Spotlight Game presented by ADT. Our presentation of college football will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. This could be for a national championship. It's up. The kick on the way. He missed it. Wide left. And if you're a Miami fan, you know over the course of this series that if there was a song involved about Florida State, it would be, I get a kick out of you. Three wide lefts. A three wide rights and the wide left was last year. I don't know if this one will come to a kick or not because it's 22 to 7. And when Miami leads at the end of three, they don't lose often. Tell you what, if Florida State gets another one on the board here, everybody's going to tighten up real quick. They work from the 44 with a first down. Rick Look out. floats it out to Booker, and he is dropped for a loss of about five as we check in with John in New York. You guys want to see a great play. Clemson against Virginia. Whitehurst is going to give it to Yousef Kelly. Back to Derek Hamilton. He's going to pass to Kevin Youngblood. He takes it and gets it down to the one yard line and from there Whitehurst takes it in so Clemson has come back to tie Virginia and Arkansas trailing now 10 3 against Auburn. Well that looked like a Bowden play. Yeah for Clemson pass today it's a little sloppy to do a lot of that here. Second and 14 for Chris Ricks from the gun. Trying to take off with it. He finds some open field. That's what's make him so good. And cartwheels down to the 41-yard line. Now he's an excited a... quarterback. Mud in his face. 18-yard run in Miami's face. The defense comes up the field. And there's a crease in the center. And Chris takes it. Nice job of getting downfield and then, well, he doesn't really get down and protect himself, but he gets yeah. down. <laughs> and the thing that's so oft criticized by guys that are not Chris Rick supporters that he runs too often, that just saved the day on that third down. And now Booker inside the 40 to the 39, 13 40 to go. As Bob said, if Florida State scores here, look out. Eighth play of the drive coming up for the Knowles. You could see when they got those two interceptions. As we said, we don't know if the momentum swung completely. But when Leroy Smith and Rufus Brown intercepted those two balls, even though one of them proved to be points and the other one didn't, the momentum has swung a little bit to Florida State. And it changed with the defense. Florida State defensively went out and took the ball away from Miami on three straight occasions. Second down, every play getting bigger. Rick's in trouble. Got away from one. Found some open field again. Diving forward, he might have another first down. Very close. He's a different player right now than he was in the first half. Not throwing the bad passes, making decisions, just taking off and running when he needs to. A third down and... A short one to go. 26 yards rushing on this drive for Chris. Remember the sacks are added in there. That's why what I just said made that statistic look a little different. Jones. Oh. Vilma's got him all wrapped up. Miami has shut down the running game all day. I think he got a good spot though, Grease. I think it's a first down. They're going to bring the chains out. Boy, if he didn't, he's two lengths of the chain short. Well, this is the biggest measurement of the day, well, obviously. Even, even if you don't have it, you still you gotta go, go for it. Yeah. yeah. They're not going to see it that many more times. There's only 12 minutes left in the game. Yeah, he got it by the football. So the drive stays alive. Bobby Bowden and Larry Coker. 
A lot of respect between those two guys. One was an assistant forever. Became a head coach and won a national championship. The second year got back to the national championship. This guy's won two in the 90s. And he's won 337 games. His team's got a first down at the 31 of the Hurricanes. Florida State can't afford any more mistakes. Every snap counts now. Ricks flushed from the pocket. Looking downfield. Let's it go. He's got Thorpe out there. Incomplete in the end zone. Sean Taylor again was right there. He thought he was interfered with. That's five balls he's had his hands on today, Taylor. He's, he's had on, his hand on the ball more than most receivers he's, are running that. <laughs> he's got to love this. Earlier we asked you the Aflac trivia question. Which quarterback has the most career passing yards in the Miami Florida State Series? I got a guess. I'll give you guys first crack. I got to say Dorsey. Okay. How about you, Swanee? Oh, we're talking about any quarterback? Yeah. Oh. Well, I don't know. Dorsey's been there a lot. I'm going to say uh, Winky. I know he had two huge games, even though he lost one of them. I'm going to go with Winky, too. We'll give you the answer after this. Dorsey won his, though. Bob's got a good point. On second down, quick throw out complete. And Chauncey Stovall's got the catch. And our answer for you, we actually gave you about two quarters to think about this. So a lot of you out there had time to either go to your computers or go to your scrapbooks. And the answer is Chris Wanky with 1144 yards in three games. Didn't necessarily get the wins, but he got a lot of yards. And a Heisman Trophy while he played here. Big play here. Guy wearing the same number, also named Chris. Hands off to his fullback, B.J. Dean. And B.J. getting a little sugar. He doesn't handle it much, but that's a big one. It's a nice call by Jeff Bowden, the offensive coordinator for the Seminoles. They're, they're in this game. They're back in it. They just got to keep plugging and no turnovers. This is his career-long run, Bob. <laughs> I like that. This may be his only run of the year. His eighth carry of the season, but this one the biggest one by far. And a first down now in the red zone again for Florida State at the Canes 17-yard line. Game getting interesting. Thorpe in motion toward the ball. Rick's in trouble and down he goes. Oren Harris, those two have had a lot of conversations today. Oren's had a good game. Sophomore tackle out of Newark, Delaware. There he is right here. He's just going to beat the, the uh, offensive guard lined up in front of him. Just throws him out of the way. That's Bobby Meeks, the uh, right guard. Harris gets back there, third sack of the year. And as if Florida State needed anything working against it anymore, the rain just started big time again. It is really coming down. And now they need a pass play. Second down and 18. Chris Ricks from the shotgun. Wet football. Hands it off to Leon Washington. Washington broke a tackle. Got back across the original line of scrimmage, and he's down to the 13. That's a nice call. Line up. Show your show, uh, show pass. Go in the gun but then run the football. You don't have many plays that you can run from a shotgun formation, but the draw to your little scat back is an outstanding call because you show pass from the start. The offensive line gets down, picks up a couple blocks, mine rod. Do you believe this is the 15th play of this drive coming up? Wow. It's two down territory, you can bet. Third down at the 13-yard line of Miami. Canes are going to blitz. Ricks throws. Thorpe dropped it. Flag down. Penalty marker will be first down Florida State. He got three flags. Kelly Jennings went up with Thorpe. The ball came loose. The flags came out. There's your laundry. Pass interference on Miami. Single coverage out here. You got blitz. Pass interference. Gets the defense. Spot foul. Automatic. First down. I think he had his left hand on him before, before they went up for the ball. Yeah, I see him pulling on the jersey. 
a good call. Chris Ricks had to wait and wait and wait, and he paid for it from Sean Taylor. Who else? Out of safety blitz. The officials trying to keep the ball dry before they put it down at the last moment. It'll be at the five-yard line. I was wondering why Greg Jones wouldn't be in there. He just trotted to the huddle. Uh, you don't want to get fancy and run wide. You need your big power back. 22 to 7 Miami first and goal Florida State trying to get a touchdown to make it a game Greg Jones Vilma's got him wrapped up might have gotten a yard though we mentioned Florida State's de defense leads the nation in fewest points allowed Miami's defense has only allowed five touchdowns this year uh, second and goal now to four five well, rushing touchdowns Florida State took over at its own 17 when there was still three minutes and change left in the third quarter. There's eight and a half minutes left in the game. Pretty soon they got to get it in the end zone because they know they have to get it back again. Yes. Second and goal at the Canes four. Jones again. Up the middle. Maybe got to the two and then he got planted. Vilma is there. So is Greg three. Whew. There's a little bit of hitting going on right now, partner. There is some hitting going on, and it looked like Jones was going to have his way until Taylor came up and pushed the pile back. Is it too late for play action, or do you have to steep, keep knocking it in there? I think it's too late for play action. I don't think it's too late for a quarterback draw. Chris Ricks wants a little quiet on that end of the field. This is power football here. And he wants a little divine intervention. He wants Greg Jones in the end zone, and he's not getting anywhere near the line of scrimmage. Yeah. DJ Williams led the charge. You got to go. It's fourth down. You got to go for it, and even if you don't make it, you still leave Miami backed up. But you certainly would like to get it in here. And timeout taken by Florida State. Bobby Bowden will talk it over with his offensive coordinator and son Jeff. We'll talk it over in the booth. We'll be back. 7-17 left. 22-7 Miami. Offensive coordinator Jeff Bowden has talked it over for about the last four minutes with his dad, the head coach Bobby, on the sideline. And it is fourth down Florida State. And you'll be able to tell who called this play by the formation. If it's a power eye formation, Bobby called it. If, if it's, it's a spread, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now this could be, this could very easily be a quarterback draw. In fact, I'd be willing to bet on it. Fourth down and goal. They're 0 for 1 on fourth down conversions. They had that hail mary to end the first half. Ricks scrambles, has to get rid of it. Wobbling pass, and it's almost intercepted. It's incomplete. Greg Treat broke it up. Miami takes over. You got to block somebody on the defensive line. The lineman, the offensive line didn't block anybody. 18 play drive that comes up empty. That could be the killer, and that could be the winner for Miami. Let's go back to the last play. Here are the two linebackers right here. They get up into the line of scrimmage. The defensive end is going to come free. You've got to block somebody to give your quarterback time to throw. He does a nice job getting around the defensive end, Atkins. But when you're rolling out like that and you got a wet ball and you throw it from your back foot, that's a, that's a good attacking scheme by Miami. They won that play. The Nissan drive summary for Miami the last three times they've given it up. That's what Florida State has got to hang their hopes on now because there's only 7-11 left. Winslow in motion. Jared Payton. Payton bounces out across the 10 and up to the 16-yard line. Big, big run. Closing in on 100. Closing in on another win for Miami. Let's check in with John in New York. Big rivalry where you guys are, and we have a bigger one coming up as well. Texas and Oklahoma. This is before the game, and the players come head-to-head, helmet-to-helmet. Bob Stoops, head coach of Oklahoma, said, get back. 
These guys want to go after it right now. They don't want to wait until you guys are done, but they'll have to. Oklahoma, Texas, some of you will see Arizona State, Oregon, or Penn State in Purdue. Brent and Gary and Jack are probably fighting too. Ball is loose. And still Miami ball. Boy, almost another turnover. There's and the Art Keel, the offensive line coach. You know, he's been at Miami for 25 years. He was a he was a player there. Then he was a graduate assistant. Then he was an assistant coach. He's been an assistant. He's the assistant head coach now. He's been under five head coaches, has five championship rings, and he is one of the best coaches around. He's an offensive line coach, and he is doing a great job with that offensive line. Jared Payton today has more yardage than Florida State as a team. It's a career high, 95 yards on the ground. But the key to him right now is not fumbling the football, holding on to that ball. And goes down at about the 18-yard line. Got a couple. So when we started a little over three hours ago, we said, isn't it ironic that two Hall of Famer sons, and there they are in the same picture, would have such a big bearing on a college football game. And Kellen Winslow Sr.'s in the Hall of Fame. The late Walter Payton's in the Hall of Fame. And Jarrett and Kellen right now having a chat because they are going to be a huge part of a big, big win if they can hold on here the next five and a half minutes. Now, if Sean Taylor's dad would have been an All-American or a Hall of Famer, <laughs> we could have put him up, too. That we'd had all three of them covered. Yes, we could have. Third down and long. They play it safe. Peyton bounces off the first tackle, but Nicholson, nice open field stop by A.J. Nicholson. Penalty marker down. It is a holding call against the Hurricanes. They'll probably decline that. Bobby Bowden might have to wait another Saturday for win number 338. That's how many Joe Paterno has. Bobby's number two at 337. A lot of people felt Bobby's team favored today that they'd win at home and that Joe Paterno might lose. And by Monday, they'd, by Sunday, they'd both be at 338. But it doesn't look like it's going to play out that way. Brian Monroe to punt. Let's see if Florida State will bring it to him. They've blocked one punt this year already. Tell you what, Miami sure putting the protection up there, expecting a full onslaught. Snap is wide. He just got the kick away. And Chris Davis has to let it roll, and now he picks it up. Oof, and he paid for it at the 42-yard line. 43-yard kick, 4.48 remaining. Miami, 22, Florida State, 7. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Valvoline's Max Life. At 75,000 miles, it's time to switch to Max Life. Nissan and your Nissan dealer. And Coca-Cola, let's make it real. The reality of this is it looks like Miami will run its regular season win streak to 38 games, its regular season road win streak to 18 in a row if they can hang on the next 448s. Talk what? about some road warriors. Yep. 17 road wins in a row. Miami's always been good on the road. Ricks from the shotgun. You see the five receiver group for him. Has time. Now has to scramble. He doesn't throw that well on the run. Let's this one go and a one hopper intended for Thorpe. Time permitting. Stay tuned for the thrifty car rental post game report. John Terry and Craig will have a scores and highlights from around the country. And of course the second half of our doubleheader on ABC is coming up as soon as we're done. Jared Payton his first start will be a memorable one a career high 95 yards and remember. He scored the offensive touchdown yep. on a 14 yard screen pass. The only touchdown Miami offense scored. He he got fifth year senior makes his first start. Good for him. Quick pass out to PK Sand. Broke one tackle got around the second spinning his way to the 49 nifty move by PK Sam. He's about a yard short of a first down. Another Florida State drive their last drive. They had the ball a long time over 11 minutes 18 plays and didn't get anything out of it. And they know they got to get something out of this one or this game's over. We're down to almost four minutes. And you see they're about a yard. A little over a yard shy of the first down. 
Leon Washington's back in there. And movement and motion, and Miami says that Florida State jumped, and maybe they did. <laughs> Check the color of those yellow flags. To the snap. Both sides. Off edge. And a lot of yellow flags today, and a lot, a lot of mud. A lot of mud, a lot of laundry. First penalty this half. Could have fooled me. Could have fooled me, too. <laughs> On Florida State, it's the first penalty of this half. All right. That sounds more like it. All right. Third down and six. And now we're under four minutes. 15 points. Florida State's got to make up. They've got to get a big play pretty soon. Ricks throws incomplete. Yeah, you got John fight. Vilma interfered yeah. with Leon Washington. Yeah. Just a little bit early for John. And the lieutenant for number three, Leon Washington. He got there a half step too quickly. Vilma, who admitted this week he hated to, but he finally got around to admitting that Florida State was one of his options where he'd play football. Lou grew up right near the University of Miami at Coral Gables down in Bob's old stomping ground. And part of the reason he thought about coming to Florida State was when Chuck Amato was here as defensive coach before he left for North Carolina State. He said, as soon as he went to Raleigh, I knew I was staying in Miami. There's something there to be said, too. The penalty yards we said earlier, the one with the most usually wins, believe it or not. Ricks, look out, Chris, throwing long. Double coverage out there. And a penalty marker. It's probably going to be offensive pass yeah. interference. Yeah. It was Chris Davis out there, and Merriweather and Taylor really had a better play on the ball than the wide receiver did. Taylor had his eyes on his sixth, the sixth one. He wanted to get his hands on it. <laughs> Some days you go and you don't even get close to an interception. Right. There are two penalties on the play. Pass interference, offense, roughing the passer, defense. Penalties offset, repeat down. So we'll do it again. And there, there's Larry Coker talking to Nat, number 57. Here's Davis with the shove on Taylor. <laughs> he almost caught it anyway. <laughs> he got them both. And here's the late hit on the quarterback. And Chris Ricks took it standing up. I think that's a good call. He took two steps before hitting the quarterback. So now the 47 yard line is a first down. There's the games coming up next. Part of our doubleheader. This one's been. Pretty much all Miami, but there's still hope for Florida State. Quarterback drawn, he'll have to take it outside, and he gets nothing out of it. Maybe got a yard. So this will be another long day and another long week for Chris Ricks if Florida State doesn't win this game. Well, it was a tough one. It was it, it, not only it was you were fighting a, a very difficult defense. An aggressive defense in Miami, but you're also fighting the conditions, the weather. Yep. And uh, that's tough enough to do. And they've been way below poor all day. Three and a half minutes to go. Ricks throws. This one's complete. P.K. Sam has been really his favorite target today inside the 40 to the 39. You know, we, we mentioned it earlier about practicing in bad weather. This is why you should practice some in bad weather. You don't have to go out all, every time it rains or in bad weather, but you need to, to, to have some serious practice conditions to prepare for games like this. And like you said, some days when it's this bad, you don't even think about it. You don't practice at all. You don't go out. You have lightning or it's just raining too hard. Third down, Chris Ricks. Firing. Oh, broken up, and Taylor got a hand on another one. And Alfonso Marshall was there, too. And now it's fourth down. Well, oh, Bob and Brad, I don't know about Florida State, but Larry Coker told me that there was quite a bit of rain in Florida in this year that they've practiced a fair amount in rainy weather and conditions. So I think what you said told, holds true, and Larry Coker had excellent confidence in his team coming out when the rain was coming down. Yeah, well, the other thing, you, you just can't do what you want to do when it rains, like throwing the ball way down the field, down the sideline, you can't do that because maybe your quarterback has small hands and it's going to slip. If you can't throw passes when the ball's wet, you just can't do some things. Here's the last chance for Florida State on fourth and two. 
Chris Ricks trying to buy himself some time. Lofts it out for Crefonzo Thorpe. Broken up by Sean Taylor. How many times have we said that today? So Miami will take over. Many of you that are waiting for the Oklahoma-Texas game, you'll see your kickoff. We've got a timeout with 2.41 remaining in the ball game. Miami is in command, and it appears the number two team in the country will be 6-0 moments from now. Our Pacific Life game summary on a rainy day in Tallahassee. Brock Berlin didn't have to do a lot. He threw more interceptions than Chris Ricks, but he's the one that's going to get another win. Turnovers were the story today by far, and the points that came off them. And Miami just stopped Florida State on downs again, which they did earlier after an 18-play, 11-minute-plus drive that could have had Florida State in the mix in this fourth quarter. And now they just gave it back to Miami again at the 40-yard line. So mm -hmm. only yeah. six of the 29 points that were scored in this game didn't come off of turnovers. So that's kind of the way this day went. Bad day, bad weather. And just straight ahead for the quarterback, Brock Berlin. So he's going to go to 6-0 and as Miami's starting quarterback. As we check in with John in New York. John. Another Bowden update in Clemson. Looked like they had the game won, but down to the final minute, Alvin Pierman takes it in for Virginia. The extra point ties the game. They are now in overtime. Meanwhile, Arkansas loses for the first time this year, down by Auburn 10 3. Final 233 here, John. And Miami, you think about winning 18 straight regular season road games. Yeah. We did the last time they lost. It seems like it was a hundred years ago. It was our it was uh, at Washington yeah. in Seattle in the year 2000 and then they went on a string where Kenny Dorsey didn't lose for a couple of years. They won a national championship. It's, and it's not very often Brad that uh, the Hurricanes are underdogs right and I'm sure that Larry Coker used that as some motivation. The Canes came in to this game a seven point underdog primarily on the strength of uh, barely beating West Virginia 10 days ago and then probably the loss of uh, Frank Gore the running back. Yep. Well, Jared Payton's been the guy that upheld that part of the business today. He's the tailback right now. I probably won't see it. Maybe Berlin will just take a snap himself again here because Florida State's running out of timeouts and ways to stop the clock. They will give it to Jarrett one more time. Payton up the middle. And again, the games that are following us, the Oklahoma and Texas folks, you'll see the kickoff of that one. Penn State and Purdue in the Big Ten, Oregon and Arizona State in the Pac-10. That's what's coming up next. Bob and Brad, Jared Payton's having a, a solid football game for his team this afternoon. And one of the things he wanted most of this game was for his mother, Connie, to be here at the game. But he's, he's got another child, a daughter at Arizona State, and she had to be there. She made a commitment. And I talked to him beforehand. He said, you know, I really wanted my mom to be at this game, to see this game, but I love her. And just like my dad, I know she is always with me. So, Connie, he's got you in his heart. Yep, and he sure does. And he's played with a lot of heart today. That carry will make him fall further away from the 100 yard mark. He needed about one more yard, but. But, but a he, smart move by not going yeah, out of bounds. Exactly. So a penalty marker didn't see that in all the mud personal foul and holding double whammy on Miami. And and the negative about that for Miami is it stops the clock. I don't think there's any doubt as to the outcome of the game. But holding gets the offense penalties decline dead ball personal foul against the offense will be assessed fourth down. A lot of flags on this day. Larry Coker will be 30 and one. What an outstanding job he's Boy, done. You know, I we guess. just kind of take him for granted. Uh, he's he's been a coach at the University of Miami a little over two years. He's been in the national championship game both years and won it one time. He has his team undefeated in the third year. Here's just, a. 
Here's a Affleck trivia question for you. Right. He's about to become the first coach since the 1950s to win his first three games against Florida State. Andy Andy Gustafson. Andy back Gustafson. Back in the 50s. Good old Andy. Time to punt. Monroe had a lot of pressure on him on the last kick. Taking as much time as they can before the snap. And in fact they'll go to the point where they'll take the delay a game and let all the time wind down. Down to 116 as they walk off another penalty. Action tonight on ESPN and ESPN2. Great weekend of college football. Georgia and Tennessee will get together. Number 10 dogs against the Volunteers in Ohio State and Wisconsin. 9 o'clock on ESPN and that'll be a tough one at Camp Randall at 8 o'clock Central Time after a day of brat be, bratwurst and cheese. That'll be an interesting one. Yeah, it will. Nice high kick by Monroe. Returnable, though, for Davis from the 37, but he goes down in his tracks. And that's that's the way the game has been. Yep. That's the type of field we've had. Slippery all day. You just cannot do the things you're normally used to doing. You got any guesses on our Chevrolet most valuable players? I'd take Sean Taylor for I, Miami. <laughs> I would too. <laughs> Sean Taylor, two interceptions. He had his hands on it six times today. Caught two of them, took one to the barn for a touchdown. Michael Bulware was in double figures in tackles. He'll go home an unhappy senior, though, because he will have never beaten the Hurricanes. In recognition of their effort, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 donation to each university's general scholarship fund. Chris Ricks. Final minute gets the ball complete. Lorenzo Booker. And we wind under a minute. Florida State does have one timeout remaining, but the time is running out. Again, the game's coming up that you'll see. Check your local listings. Well, what's next on Separation Saturday? And this is apparently going to separate Florida State from its number five national ranking. That we know. And Virginia Tech. Number four with a big, big win today. The outcome of Oklahoma and Texas will have a bearing on shaking up the ratings. The first BCS poll comes out nine days from now. And this team will definitely be number two in the nation next week. Maybe number one, depending on what Texas has to say to Oklahoma. I don't imagine the Hurricanes are worrying about that right now. They're just thinking that they're about ready to get their 27th win in 47 outings against their in-state rivals from here in the state's capital of Tallahassee. P.K. Sam, nice catch. He's had a good game. It's not going to be enough, but he's been the favorite target today for Chris Rick's seven, uh, eight catches for 79 yards for P.K. And while Chris has desperately tried to get some big ones to Crofonzo Thorpe, other than that one early in the ball game, which... Basically, he just lofted up there, and Crofonzo went and got it. He hasn't been a factor today. Final 20 seconds. Ricks fires it out in the flat. Davis makes a nice move on. Spins his way inside the 30 down, or 35 down to the 33. And 12 seconds, all we have left. And Florida State's taking its last time out with 12 seconds left. Well, Florida State will turn their attention back to the ACC, the conference. Uh, yep. Get back in, try to uh, win the conference uh, that they've dominated since they've been in it. To the tune of, what, 10 out of the last 11 championships yep. in the ACC. Yep. Bobby's going to have to wait another day for win number 338. Mm -hmm. Miami will be joining them next year in the conference. This game will be played on uh, Labor Day weekend. Yep, on a Monday night. Monday night. On ABC. So Larry Coker, 30 and 1, not too shabby, huh? And the one was an overtime loss in a national championship game. Well, he'll go back. Good to... guy, runs a nice program. Yes, he does. He'll go back to South Florida, a happy camper. He'll have won three straight in his first three years against the Seminoles. Final couple of plays coming up, 12 seconds remaining. A 
Ricks rolls to throw. Chris has been running that way all day and got it to P.K. Sam out of bounds. At about the 17-yard line, so one play left at least. Another pickup of 16. Like this game is never going to end. Yeah. The game that wouldn't give us the doubleheader. <laughs> it just won't stop. <laughs> All of you that are waiting for the doubleheader games, some of them underway, and you'll see all those in the next six seconds or so. At the 17, might be the final play of the ball game. It will be the last play, barring a penalty. Throw to the end zone, touchdown! Chris Davis. Chris Ricks finds Chris Davis in the end zone. It's just going to make the scoreboard look a little better. 16-yard touchdown pass. Too little, too late. But he never gave up. Nope. Kept fighting. Maybe learned something from this. And the Canes can celebrate. Brock Berlin still unbeaten as their quarterback. And he hasn't lost since he was back in short pants. This will be 52 great. straight games great. back to high school that Brock hasn't lost a ball game. Great school. Bathia's extra point is good. And that will give us the final tally. 22 to 14. Miami wins it. So the Canes, number two in the nation, go to 6 and 0. Oh. The score is closer than the game really was. It was Miami's ball game, though they got sloppy in the second half with some turnovers. They pretty much dominated play today and showed that they are indeed among the elite. Florida State has to regroup a little bit. They lose their first one of the year to go to 5 and 1, and they will drop. Probably out of the top 10. So you can see Swanee is lining up with Larry Coker. Let's go down to him. Lynn. Well, coach, tough, sloppy, hard fought ball game. If you had one game ball, do you give it to Sean Taylor or do you give it to special teams? I'll tell you what, special teams, sure, but Sean Taylor was phenomenal today. You got you gotta give Sean Taylor a, a game ball. This this was just a great effort by our football team. We didn't flinch, we came into a tough environment against an outstanding football team. This is a great win for us. Coach, thank you very All much. Right. Brad. All right, fellas. That's the final 22 to 14 from Tallahassee. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. Search ABC Sports. Coming up next, the second half of our college football doubleheader. Most of you'll see top-ranked Oklahoma against Texas. Others will see Penn State battle Purdue on the West Coast. You'll see Oregon and Arizona State. Once again, our final score, number two Miami over number five Florida State. 22 to 14 is our final. For Bob Greasy and Lynn Swan and our ABC crew from Tallahassee, I'm Brad Nessler. So long.